We are recording. <laughs> of course! Every time. Every time. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> so who would like to recap Chaos? It's tradition. Uh, yeah. Xena showed off her dissection project last session. Uh, Orizer, we sent him, like, text message pictures, but he has no idea what to do with it. Um, so we've got it currently in a containment chest that's now in the haversack, trying to, like, keep it separate from everything. Um, I've got feedback from somebody there. Uh, Tanya. Oh, Tanya. Uh, Tia. Right? Oh, feedback? It might be me, sorry. Yeah. It is. Is that better? I am, let me see. Nope. Mm, still getting something. Okay, that time we didn't. Mm, it comes and goes. Anyway. Uh, T, if you can set up push talk. Oh, push talk. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. Or just tap mute when you're not talking. Okay. I'll tap mute. I'll tap mute for now. Okay. I'll let you know what's up. Gotcha. Um, anyway, we let Aquarius out, kind of, for the party under seeming as a disguise. And we went to find Ronir for a cha for a chat and had a few encounters along the way, which was tons of fun. And I don't think we're ready to abandon that D hundred chart. <laughs> uh, kid who kicked Ash to four Rosalind, named Sammy, is General Smokestack's son. He's apparently a little bit of a fan now. Um, we met a new person, new party member, a Yonti named Yem Yemma. Um, um, yep. Yes. Um, apparently this one was looking for us and sent by quote-unquote the father, which is a god of some sort. This person has some fame, they seek stability, and from the plane of earth and water. Um, so that'll be interesting, sorting that out, figuring what what's going up there. Um, Ronir now has fame from Orizer, and he passed some along to his sister. Uh, he'll support us informally. He's not going to be hands-on in uh, aiding us in what we're trying to do, but bringing up Orizer, apparently a pretty good move, as was the Fane sharing. So he's got mm -hmm. some things to sort through, but he has offered us rooms in the palace for the night um, before we head up to Citadel to uh, have a chat with the general and hopefully head off to find that castle. Um, oh, and on the way back to the party areas, uh, for the rest of the afternoon, evening, something, we found a telepathic dog, his mate, and six puppies. They're now in the hut. Uh, Rosalind is currently carrying the symbol of the prince, um, for our, our pass into the palace as well. So, that's all I got. All right. Also, there was a bit of an interrogation to Koriyama because we have trust issues. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that can just be assumed with this party. Also, yeah. I apologize for a fragile trust issue. Yeah, I swear it's not us as players, it's the poor characters. They've been through a lot at this point. Mm-hmm. I apologize. I'm not sorry, but I apologize. Don't fuck it. Why? <laughs> okay. Don't worry. I'm still waiting until I throw the really bad stuff at them. Wonderful. Okay, so. I think the last left off with the menagerie beginning to get settled inside of base. And the party getting ready for festivities. Eat. <laughs> oh yeah, we so, let Aquarius out and disguised her so she could join in. Yep, we yep, did. She's gone back to take care of the hypocrite for now. Okay. Yes. Well, seeming just plain lasts for eight hours, no concentration, so if she wants to keep it up in case she wants to come out later, she can just let us know and that can be a thing. Gotcha. What happens if we, like, feed a rope into the pot? It works like rope. I advise us doing that. Okay, but like, it, but like, if it went from the kind of like top of it, it, it works exactly as a rope would. So you can climb up the rope out the top of the pot, and just kind of emerge from it like some eldritch being. From yep. Just once you got out, that you 
would suddenly weigh what you normally weigh. Okay, so it'd just be a bit disorienting, but just a bit. Okay. We could yoink him out of the pie. But we're yeah, not going to uh, break anything. Yeah. No, I mean, unless the rope would normally break. And... Honestly, Ashta jumped into the top of the vase uh, last time and flew down to the floor, so clearly full-size people can pass through the opening at this point. Yeah, but he, I, it's more so just like having the rope kind of like hanging on the edge of the pot and putting weight on it is my concern. Mm, maybe you'd have to anchor it or something. Nails. <laughs> I just realized you probably I mean, couldn't put nails into a pot, now could you? Of, no, what kind Doesn't of, end well. What kind of physics would it be to tie the end of the rope around the neck of this vase, assuming it that it's one where the neck goes in and then out and flares open, so that it's presumably anchored on the outside, would it still break as you came out? No, the pot is magically strong. That's kind of what I was figuring. Alright, we'll explore this later. Yeah. Yeah, it's more so just a matter of when you pull on the rope, you are putting that amount of weight on the pot. Uh, this Therefore, is that is one... on someone's back. It's heavy. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be one unique series of pot tests. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> wow. What, are you tripping over that one? Oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Wasn't want anybody good. else to, so... Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're heading Corner. to the festivities, please. Right. <laughs> Caius yeah, wants and... to go pick a fight, I believe. Yeah. Yes, but on the way there, let's let Ariel roll a quick D100. <gasps> yes! What's a 58? <laughs> Give me a second. Consult the ancient texts. The ancient texts are fucking shit up. Issue. You should use that phrase more. Yeah. <laughs> just in general? Alright. Yeah, well just any time, like, I need to check my notes, no. I, m I must consult with the Elder Gods. I must consult go. the Elder Gods for notes, I must consult the ancient text for whenever you have to look something up in the books. Oh, it's not a book there, it's just a piece of paper I put somewhere down I'm trying to find. No, I mean in the books, books. Like, oh, yeah, gotcha. rules and so on, yeah. <laughs> I am, uh, Even making my auger. Thing. Divining into my scrying bowl. Allow me to peruse <laughs> the magical tome. Let me check the grimoire. Let me prepare grimoire, that spell. Let me, let me, yeah, let me consult the ancient writings. L let me cross-reference my Necronomicon here. <laughs> let me summon this tiny sake. imp and just ask it what the fuck I'm trying to find. Let me glimpse at my grimoire. Is the imp named ah. Google? Allow me to, yeah, allow me to no, take a look at my uh, Codex of Ultimate. Technically, it's called Google Docs, but... Give no. me a minute, I gotta Google. I'm gonna go talk to the Oracle. There. Yeah, there Alright, found it, okay, okay. There should be an Oracle named well, Google. Falling in line with the shit that's fitting. Rosalind, um... Roll me a quick perception check. Oh no. Perception? Oh no. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, her passive is insane, but I can roll if you really want me to. Uh, Rosalind it's always gets... her choice, passive or... I mean, if it's always my choice, I always dead. go with passive, because I've got a plus five to that that does not show up on my skill check modifier. Yeah, but just do you want to risk rolling the higher is up to you. Honestly, it's, uh... I would have to roll 16 or higher on a d20 in order to get higher. Yeah, um, and I, I doubt it's that high of a thing if it's a frivolous little... <laughs> yeah, I'm just going with the 15. Okay, so... As you are uh, walking down the streets, getting prepared, I assume, more so the casual thing of like, you know, making sure you're clean with prestidigitation, maybe making sure your hair is all tied up how you need it to. Um, <laughs> you got your hair kind of like, your chin tilted down so that you can see, uh, so you can tie your hair up. <laughs> and you see like a small silver flower growing, growing up the side of a house as you pass by. It seems to be glowing just a little bit. Oh, she stops. She backs up a step. She's gonna take what is that? Oh. <laughs> Hand hovering above the crossbow. What's up? Yeah, what is it? I'm gonna go Look. pick a fight. No, no, no. I I'm sorry. It's just this caught my eye for a moment. Can I do nature? Is this something that she'd read of or knows of? Try it. 20. Okay. Um, you've heard of a couple, like, underground uh, bioluminescent flowers before? Um... 
could be either something called um, silver vein, which is known to be found in this area, um, or it could be something known as. Please hold while I consult, consult my Necronomicon. Allow me to glance over the. Why a Necronomicon? The little diamond is the is another flower that's of similar style. Is it just the one growing there? As far as you can tell, yeah. Alright, she's gonna look around and see if there's anybody standing nearby that seems to, like, belong in the this area, this property, or...? Uh, it, roll a perception check, but it's just growing out of a crack, it seems like, in the wall. Oh, in the wall, not in a ha not planted there for a house sort of thing. No, no, it's, it's, it's growing out of, a, like, a small crack at about uh, ankle level. Okay. Um, if it seems to be wild grown and not, you know, planted. Um, on that 20, does she know anything, like, uh, quality wise? Or not quality wise. Um, um, oh god. Uh, abilities, not abilities. Um, I'm losing properties. Her. Properties, yes, it began with a P. Yes, properties. Of either um, one of those. Like, are they yeah, poisonous so you would know that... to touch, or...? No, no, no. So they're both relatively safe. Their um, silver vein is... Um, the root structure is very fibrous, but incredibly strong. So people will use it for, like, minor weaving, or they'll get it to grow in areas that need to keep soil together. Um, and the little diamonds, uh, if you enchant them properly, can be used in substitute of diamonds for healing spells. Letter if enchanted. And do either of these grow from any kind of cuttings, or do they require seeds? Uh, it's reasonable to assume that you could get seeds from the flower if you cut it. Um, as for specifically this one, I don't know enough about flowers to answer that question, person. <laughs> okay. Um, it depends. I'd say if you're making up fantasy stuff, you can... Same okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was like a rule of thumb to go for. Yeah, no. Cuttings often work... F it's it's like the thing where you pick a weed, and if you leave the root in, it'll grow back, or if you just throw the weed to the side, it might grow from that stem. Oh, no, I know how it works. Yeah, I don't oh, know how sorry. it would work specifically for certain flowers. Um, I will say that there's so much fucking druid magic in the area, it's really hard to not grow a plant properly. All right. Like, the entire oh, no. country, it's, just, it's really easy to grow plants. Okay. Um, yeah, Rosalind's gonna go ahead and... Yeah, she's gonna go ahead and... One moment, and she's gonna cut the uh, flower and tuck it into her hair. For safekeeping. As you go to cut it, um, you basically snip off the bud and put it in your hair. And it does actually start to glow once it's in your hair, a bit brighter than it did before. But you notice that the, a little bit of fluid dripping out of the end, um, coming down is like this very, very bright, uh, like, silver coming down. Alright, is that normal for those on that roll? Um, I know. It could be for either one. They're bioluminescent, so it's reasonable to assume the fluid is as well. Okay. So what are the properties of the flower again? Sorry, just taking notes. Uh, it depends on the flower. Uh, if it's silver vein, it's got a very strong root structure and holds soil together and apparently can be used in weaving. Um, if it's little diamond, then it can, if it's properly enchanted, it can be used as a substitute for those diamonds in certain resurrection spells. Which could be handy. So, she's gonna see about growing that, uh, growing from what she picked later, but right now... It's just tucked away for uh, safety. Okay. And she's okay. gonna she's gonna chat with others and share what she thinks she knows and how she needs to look up and maybe see if she's gonna take like a leaf with her as well, just in case she needs to do some research and figure out which one it is. Smart. Rayla's still in the uh, pot, right? Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, Rayla's still in the pot, right? Yes. 
Uh, could he like just like give her a quick like tap, uh, like tap on the pot, call her up? I mean, yeah, I figured by now you guys figured out like a series of taps that mean come. Yep. Considering the whole pocket thing. Um, so yeah, she can float out too. I'm just you wouldn't happen to know anything about this. I mean, you were a flower at one point, right? She fluffed over to it. Not that you see it, but you hear like the wings buzzing past her ear. Um, she, she looks at it and she goes like, hmm. "I mean, it's a nice flower. Pretty cute one too." Yemma's here. Is Yemma just hearing a voice from nowhere and little? Uh, it is very quiet. So Rosalind, honestly, probably only you can hear it. Okay. Well, inexplicable things are happening. I'm sorry. It's yeah. not the first yeah. time. He is keeping. He, he will like keep her a bit on the down low yep. with the new person. Yep. And yeah, she looks at it. She kind of whispers in your Rosalind saying, "It's like, I mean, I've heard of flowers like this before. I want to say it's silver vein, but I can't be sure." Well, we'll figure it out later. I took this okay. in order to perhaps grow a little bit for it from it. Um, oh, I'll try to help you later. Of course. One second. We should get you a... See, you hear her, she kind of like floats away from your ear. Um, mm -hmm. She goes over to like where you made the cutting, and you see the droplet of liquid kind of float there, and just disappear. I hope that was you putting it in some kind of uh, small pack or vial. Basically, hear the sound next to your ear of a, of, a, of a straw inside of an empty cup. Oh. I worried that was what it was. All right. Well, I suppose it'll do you no harm. <laughs> Thank you for the sound effect. <laughs> Look, call it cannibalism if you want. Nectar tastes great. I honestly wasn't going to, but thank you for the thought. Uh, I'll see about getting. Um, I'll see about getting a flower pot and some soil, and we can try to grow from this. I'll just scrape some dirt off of Pyrrhus for now. See you soon. And do you hear the sound of like the, her foot catching on the pot as she goes back in? Okay. We continue. Alright. So, as you guys uh, head to the more lively section of the city, um, actually, a little bit to your discomfort, there is just booze everywhere. It yeah. does fit the stereotype of the dwarves under the mountain <sighs> celebrating. Yep. He's just kind of looking forward. <laughs> uh, Yemma, you notice as you're walking the streets that you're getting some... <laughs> not friendly looks from a lot of the dwarves. Uh, you, if you want to roll an insight check, you can try to discern why. Okay, I'll roll an... See what the what the dice want to tell you. Hold on, I can't find insight again. Where are okay. the dice? It's near investigation. Near investigation. Okay. You'll get used to it. Don't worry. Beside your intelligence, I would like deception, history, insight. I found it. Okay, roll in. All right. So, um, you know enough to know that the looks aren't friendly and that they, it could be race related. You're not sure. Um, what you race know enough Yama? to know that on, I am uh, UNT. You know enough uh. to know that UNT and the material are generally seen as untrustworthy, um, and that dwarves are very. Uh, Xenophobic by stereotypes. Okay. But no one seems to bother you. No one seems to bother you at the time. Watch that. I go there. I'm gonna like mail TV some headphones. Right. Sorry. Sorry. I know. This is not ideal. Um. Do you have earbuds for your earbuds for your mouth? Oof. I had earbuds with a microphone. Right now I just have earbuds. Um, 
but no microphone because I just had to. I forgot to buy a replacement pair. Wait, you still have a wow. microphone, on still have a microphone on your phone. I do, and right now, right now I'm using push to talk uh, to talk to you guys from my phone. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I'm just. Is the yeah, is the you don't have the headphones plugged you don't in have right the headphones now? Plugged in right now. No, I don't. Could you? Could you? Yes. Let's try it at least. Let's try it at least. Yeah. Oh, it's always tech issues on Saturday. It's great. It's tech issues all the time. Yeah. Tis the nature of tech. Yep. Okay. All right. Check, check. We can hear you just fine. Good. Yeah. Yes. And we don't hear Does ourselves. That help? Yes. Oh yeah. Much. No feedback. Uh, oh, was that the issue? You guys could hear. Oh, okay. I thought you meant feedback as in like a buzzing noise, not like you no. hear yourselves. No, it was just okay. we were hearing our voices from your head mirror speaker. Yeah, so it was just echoing. <laughs> Which is makes it really hard to say things in long phrases because you're just like it's like ah yeah it really throws <laughs> throws things off. Okay, but thank you for your support, y'all. Oh, okay. of course. But uh, as you guys continue to walk the street, you're already a weird kind of crew. Um, really now. Kaius, roll my perception. Once you get your sheet working. I mean, also, most of us are recognized as, like, people who killed a dragon, right? Uh, of the warriors to have seen you, yes. Um, but anyone who wasn't in the vault. Is it just Skyrim logic guys. where they just do it anyway? It's like, you just saw me kill that dragon, right? Oh well. <laughs> no. Uh, it's that thing. Oh boy. Um, We've talked about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, just I'm surprised it's not like, yeah, the really purple one and the lady in the red. True, but, uh, you've seen quite a few fanciful dresses around. The weird candlestick. The one that's head to toe in purple. Mm, okay. The purple hey. man and the candlestick. You're more of a matchstick, please. Ooh, fair. Yeah, guys, once you got the perception going, let me see. Yeah, it's just, just I like if you do 100. Can we please do more D100s? This is a lot of fun. I think Yemma oh, deserves yeah. one. Yeah, Yemma deserves a D100. Yeah, yeah. Yemma's not gotten one Probably. yet. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, that last. No, she did. She got the. Uh, I think she got the oh, dogs. Oh, the puppies! Yes, that's right. She got the dogs. She got the dogs. It was the best one. But Yemma should also get another one, considering her luck was really good. <laughs> sure. Come on. Yeah. And we're we're all naming one, right? Yeah, yeah we sure. all get to name the puppy. What everybody gets to name one of the little ones, and then we have to decide on the names for the big. Okay, we'll do yeah, that cool. outside of game. We should have done it last week, but we didn't. All right. So Caius, uh, as everyone's walking through the street, um, you kind of like trail behind for just a quick second, and immediately just a fist across your jaw. <laughs> With a natural oh. one, I can't see it. Oof. Natural two, but yeah. You get, you get a solid clock across the jaw. I I turn to see who it is. And you, you see the smoke stack and he goes, Hey, you tall, lanky motherfucker. It's oh, on. Great. And he just goes to tackle you. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, grapey my. fuck. <laughs> you raisin that looking motherfucker. Fucking pastel ass bitch. Hi, right. is Thanos confirmed. Alright, so go ahead and. <laughs> He's trying to tackle you. What are you doing? Uh, how. How is he, fingers. is he? Is he like full force tackling? Like. Oh, yeah, he's, he's trying to spear you. Ground? He's trying to spear he's... you. He's trying to spear me? Perfect. I'm, gonna... I'm just gonna run up. And just like put my foot over his head and come <laughs> bonk damage. Okay, so in that case, uh, go ahead and roll me an acrobatics check. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I Seth Rollins curb stomp him. Yeah. Um, and as you do, his head hits the ground hard, and he eventually gets back up, and he's just got like a bloody face, and he goes. Oh, the twink's got some boobs. He's gonna like try to kick you in the kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> like not not like, like not like kicking the shin like a kid. Like side of your knee, to try to break your knee. Oh, no. uh, he's got a lovely pair of tits for a girl. Uh, so go ahead and make a deck save versus that. 
Oh, <laughs> just a deck save. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you managed to pull your leg out of the way just in time, and he immediately like swings a fist overside and just like catches you across the jaw again. And his his hand is fucking solid. Like it feels like you've been hit in the face by something three times his size easily. He got fucking bitch slapped by a midget. Yeah. And he puts his hands up and he's like wavering on his feet and he goes, "Come on, that's all you got." Still, like, blood dripping down his nose and from between his eyes. Could Esther All right. go up Bye. behind him and just kind of push him forward? Uh, which one? Uh, Smokestack. Like, could Esther go up behind, give Caius, like, a look, and, like, kneel down behind Smokestack's knees? Oh, God. Yeah, go ahead and roll a stealth check. Go for it. Can I have advantage because oh, no. he's broke off his ass? Uh, it's just a lower DC. Wonderful. Oh no. Come on. DC was like six. <laughs> yes! Oh, His perception normally is like 11, dude. Esther, like, basically creeps up behind him, gives Caius, like, a knowing look, and just gets. hunches down behind his knees. Alright, Caius, what are you doing as you see this being set up? And as you guys notice, like, there's a crowd starting to gather around this. Which is why Esther wants to. End. So, Caius. What are you doing? You got you got Esther make playing the footstool behind his knees. Super kick. I'm just gonna just go <laughs> for it. Roll an attack roll. <laughs> Fucking bonk him, brother. <laughs> yeah. Boot to the chest, you just send him reeling and he trips over you, Esther. He's heavy. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah. before I like actually do the kick, I like I add some theatrics onto it, obviously like oh, yeah, I bring you... my hands up and then just <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. And he takes, like, he tries to catch your foot as it comes in, but it just, like, hits him square on the solar plexus. And as he, like, rolls back, he rolls over um, Esther, and his elbow kind of catches you in the back of the head there, Esther. But he, his head hits the ground hard on the back of his head. And you guys don't see him get up immediately. Well, fuck. As a note, Esther, you can smell the booze on this guy. Oh, yeah. Esther's gonna get up and go to look over Caius. Like, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I push Esther aside and start stamping the ground to try and catch his attention. With the fumes? Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Tuning up the band for hair another doesn't kick. doesn't ignite things, sure, but uh, still, I can just so easily imagine Esther being there and just fumes alone. Just... <laughs> yep. Oh no, her hair deadass flares up because of that. Um... Alright, it's just only a quick performance. Alright. All things that I'm proficient in. Great. Hey, this, this is it. your crowd, man. This is the shit you do. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, oh no. Caius! So oh. as you go stop on the ground, you don't see him get up. But in, but out of nowhere, a kid with some kind of bucket of what, water or piss or something comes over and throws it over Smokestack's head. And he gets up like, oh, the f and he sees you, Caius, and he goes to just like launch at you again. Oh, for sake. Uh, he's doing this recklessly, so let's see what he gets against your armor class. Oh, dear. Uh, does a 16 hit? I'm gonna flip over him. Okay, does a 16 hit first of all? A 16? Yeah. No. Okay, so yeah, are uh, you gonna go flip over him? Yes. Make another acrobatics. Okay, yeah, you flip over him, and as he, like, just barely, like, gets oh, gets past you, you just land your feet in the ground. Um, before he turns around, what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna catch him with an uppercut. Okay, so as he's spinning around, go ahead and roll your attack roll. Alright, you catch him just beneath the jaw. Are you making this a th theatrical hit, or are, you, or are you hitting him? I can, uh, Caius is proficient enough in both that he can do both. Wait, which one are you doing? Uh, like a proper uppercut. Okay. Yeah, so you hit it, and you you hear the sound of his teeth clacking together as it connects just just nicely. Um, and his head just like turns back to face you, and he grabs you by either side, like on your ears, and goes to hit you with his head. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put my I'm gonna try and push him away from me with my. Okay, roll athletics versus like, a, like, versus a grapple check. Ooh, a grapple? Yeah. 
like acrobatic. I like how he grabbed you by the ears. I just imagine this tiny. Well, how many grapple checks? Man... Roll eight grapple check. Oh uh, yeah, roll one grapple check. Okay. He is raging, so he's advantage on athletics. Ah, okay. And he rolled a nineteen, so that's like a. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you you feel his forehead just clash with your nose, and immediately you just you you feel like a shift in the bone structure in the face, <laughs> and it hurts. Um, and he lets he let, he looks at it and he sees it and he goes, ah, now we match. And he goes to do the same thing again. No one hits Caius Ambrose in the money maker. <laughs> well, roll to see if he does. Uh, acrobatic. Roll to number nineteen. Oh, yep. No. Oh, there he goes. There He's got like a plus hey! seven to do this, dude. I'm sorry. And then once more, no one hits Caius Ambrose in the thunk, as he gets you in the jaw this time, uh, in the mouth this time. And you feel like your like bottom lips start Wait, to swell what? up at the. He he's got a plus seven to athletics. I'm just rolling d20 because I don't have a sheet open. Oh fuck! Okay. All right, us is getting. All right, <laughs> strength saving throw versus Come on, the barbarian. Yeah, sure. Esther basically shoves themselves herself in between them. You um, try to, and he just completely resists it. Can you smack him with a cord? Esther is going to like lightly step by. Um. Is there any kind of, like, lull to the fight? Like, are they kind of, like, pulling themselves back at all? Uh, like, after, like, the second headbutt, and Esther does, like, a... <sighs> you see, like, the, the clothes on him, on his body, rustle, and it, like, turns to face Esther, and it's a very brief pause, but go ahead. Alright. He's just gonna, like, w like quickly walk over to Caius, put a hand on his shoulder, um... Cure wounds, and go, You lose to this guy, that means I have to fight him to know I can kick his ass. You better win. Fair he enough. pushes him forward. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. You know what? Let's just bring this to a proper map then. You guys okay with the one v one? Oh my yes. god! Yeah. Okay. Oh this god. is what we're doing. Esther's no fun. <laughs> Let Caius have his fun. He obviously looks like he's having fun doing this. Yeah, that's kind of why, even though I'm looking at spells, Rosalind's probably gonna stay out of this one. All right. Please hold while I find. Uh... As long as Caius looks like he's having fun, Esther doesn't give a shit. It's just more so if Caius is, like, you know, getting his skull fucking cracked open. That's yeah, just part of the fun. <laughs> you think Caius <laughs> hasn't had his skull cracked open before? He's had Ash to crack his skull open before. Yeah! Oh, um, yeah. You think- you think- you think Caius' oh. skull hasn't cracked open like an egg? Hold on a second. I forgot- I forgot what Ash can do. As he pushes Caius away. Oh god. Oh, oh my god! Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh, please tell me it's haste. Is that haste? Oh, is. That's haste. Oh, Good. I was waiting for someone to drop. Woo! <laughs> Alright. So give me a second and I will bring it up. The bleeding on the nose slightly stick. And he <laughs> gets a shot of a shot of something. Shot. You just right. shot him full of adrenaline, man. This is amazing. All right. It, it feels like his nose got set, and then a line of coke went up. Why? Basically. Oh, I don't know why I didn't prepare a map for this. I knew this was gonna happen. Because you were expecting to just kind of uh, flavor through it, but then it's like, no, this isn't going to be an actual. This is going to be proper a fight. Down. Um, I just want to sometimes forget Ashton can cast haste on other people. Yeah, fair. Yeah. I keep thinking it's like a therealness where it's like, yeah, only on yourself, only one time. Mm -hmm. Ignore the tail map, we're just going to go with it for now. Okay. Alright. So guys, uh, as we do attacks, feel free to just describe them however you choose. Yes. Within, like, the vague Within functions the of reality. Yeah, of course. of course. I'm going to... First, he's going to set up by kicking, kicking him once in Hold on, bring your map onto the... Oh, sorry, cheat on the map. We need a Caius in the ring. And everyone else, feel free to put your token yes. wherever. He's not actually at 12 health. Do we, even, do we even need tokens? We have this? to put our token? 
You don't have to, just if you guys want to. Yeah. And guys, I'm sorry, he's currently grabbing you by the ears. Like, you're close to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try and push him away. Then. Can I just say, All this right. is the wrong music. Tinkling piano for this is... Yep, I have it. Oh, give me okay. a sec. I know. I it just hit me. Like, it's great. Like, ah, uh, what's that song? Is um, give it a minute. It's like one of those. Fuck, give me a second. What was that song that was playing when we were listening to Fallout? I think it was we time. Fallout. Which song? I was gonna kill everybody. Oh, uh, Ride of the Valkyries. It was Ride of the Valkyries. Flight of the yeah. Valkyries. Flight of the Valkyries. Yeah, do that one. I don't have it ready, unfortunately. Fuck, that was so good! I don't just have that song on hand, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to download every song you want to put in the 20 before you can actually do it. Uh, it's open oh, source, you can know. just link it from the... Yeah, so if, if he's grappling me, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch him once in the gut and try to stun him. Okay, go for it. Uh, I'm gonna assume he's not wearing his armor right now, honestly. No. Uh, I was still a barbarian, so uh, that will yeah. hit though. Yep. Yeah, okay. And, uh, uh... Kick his ass. Okay. Constitution saving throw. It's raging. No, it's only on strength. Nope. Only strength. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't matter. Holy Did not matter. Holy... What is with the 19 you're rolling for this guy? Only. He has an API on. He doesn't want. He doesn't want a uh, smokestack to. You kidding me? No, kidding me. This guy's ass. You kidding me? <laughs> All right. In fact, I'm allowed to give you haste means he wants this guy's ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, fine. Uh, yeah, if that's that's my first attack. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I have a second, third, and fourth attack before I can do uh, <laughs> flurry of blows. So um, yeah, I'm gonna. No, you don't. You have three attacks before before flurry of blows with uh, yeah. uh, haste. Haste. Yep. Yeah, so that one, he just like takes his hand and just like slaps it out of the way as you go to try to do it again. Uh, you can see he's like gearing up to hit you with the hand you just slapped with. Oh, fuck no. off! And uh, as uh, you go once more for a third attack, oh, you're going for your uh, bon your flurry of blows? Yeah, and I... Oh, no, sorry, going... that's just a bonus action attack right there. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, yeah, so as you see, like, he pulls back the fist, you catch him once in the nose, and his head jolts back, but you see he's still going forward yeah. for the hit. Yeah, that's not going to work. If you didn't use Flurry of Blows it, you only used your bonus action attack. Okay. So roll one more uh, attack. Alright. So you give him one, and then immediately you just take your feet and like go to push him away. He's going to make a strength saving throw. With advantage, because angry, angry barbarian. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, it makes okay, it. Yeah, this, is, this is a buff. And upon seeing the fact that you are willing to fight back, you see him give a big grin, and it immediately... Oh, I only have... Uh... Oh, he actually does have an uh, offhand attack ready. Cool. Um, he immediately goes, like, one, two... Uh, like, the standard... Um, you ever see, um, what's it called? Uh, Hitman? Where it's, like, the... Like, liver punch, stomach punch, and then side of the head. Discombobulate. Yeah. He tries to go for one of those. So does 17 hit? 17 and 20 hit, so the two. Yeah, so the first uh, haste, one. Haste, haste. Oh, sorry, haste, yeah, you're haste. plus two to your armor class. Plus two to my armor class, so the, the last first one. two. two. Alright, yeah, only... right, so go ahead and mark off the eight damage. So he, he goes through the one and it switches to the side. He swings again. And you just, like, you really feel like you don't have enough time to react. But you immediately hop out of the way. And, but as you do, so the, the third punch from the uh, same hand just catches you in the side of the uh, cheek. Uh huh. He's gonna swing around you go this way, and it is your turn. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think he's All trying right. to set up for um, a suplex. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, meets the pizza. Mm. Yeah, so what are you doing to uh, counteract the suplex? Kiss, kiss ass. Uh, so basically, he's trying to he's trying to grab me from behind? Yeah. 
back elbow first, just don't and then touch the, the head, which is, isn't actually that hard because he's very short. But I actually have to kind of angle it down. Fair enough. And then uh, another uh, another super kick, this time also a stunning. Okay, go for it. Yeah, that'll hit. Roll your stun. Switching off advantage, hold on. Wow. Yeah, this, this is a tough motherfucker and he is drunk yeah, off his does. ass. Fair enough. Uh, as a note, you do have advantage on these attacks because he's uh, doing reckless for all of these. Ooh. Oh, do I? Oh. Yes. So like 3d20 to, to see if you crit any of those. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm just thinking like, like you try to stun him, but his key points are overflowing with alcohol. Uh, you you could just 3d20 and see if any of them are 20s. <laughs> oh. Rather than re-roll. Uh, he does have a fourth attack though. Oh, so. true. Yeah. So and then roll 4d20. Uh, 3d20. This one was with advantage already. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing great there, but the ones that hit, did hit. And you see that yep. last fist connect, and... <laughs> this guy's looking a bit woozy. <laughs> not sure what he got into before, but it was uh, not good for his health. <laughs> Alright. Um, and as you just like start pummeling him, make sure you're taking off the damage by the, the attacks you get hit by. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's just looking at you and goes, Oh, you're using your magic hands now, aren't you? I see this gold that you got. No, I actually haven't. Uh, you were using those full charges before. I was using one of the full charges, yeah. Yeah, so he sees you using the full charges. And he goes, oh, so that's how you want to play it, huh? And you see him pull out his hammer. <laughs> oh. oh, no! I just turned into a real light. All right. Uh-oh. And he's just got this like, less manic grin on his face, and he goes... I knew you were a tough guy, that and he's just gonna start seems. swinging. Oh, that's not oh, good. Wow. <laughs> that's hardly oh, seen. That hardly seems fair. As the most produced flame, Letty. That hardly seems fair. Okay, then. Oh that's 36? Okay, right uh, after that. Yeah, that's 36 damage there, guys. <laughs> okay. What, what is it with dwarves and their crits on this party? <laughs> All right. All right. Esther's gonna see that and immediately step in. Oh, hold on, Esther. Cause that was just his first attack. He's got one. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Fuck me. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm at like three. <laughs> oh my god. And so that's. That's 29 damage? Yeah. Uh, Kaius, I have something unfortunate to tell you. Yeah. Uh-oh. He has another attack, doesn't he? Uh -oh. Fucking Christ. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a 19. <laughs> I don't know why you pulled out a fucking hammer. Because you hit you, him you, with You magic. used your magic punching hands on him. <laughs> you up to the ante, so you did time. too. This isn't Skyrim, John. Gloves of the Pugilist don't keep the brawls going. Fine. Fine. Um, question. Are you conscious? I am barely conscious. Okay. And he looks at you and you are just beaten all the hell. And he goes like, Oh, I thought that worked better. And then immediately Esther's um, spell goes off. And uh, what's your DC, Esther? 15? He made it. Yeah, so he, he makes the save. Alright. All right, so you're doing that as your action, guys? Yeah, but I still have haste, don't I? Oh uh, yeah, just make sure you know that's only one around as How yeah. many people are currently around those? Uh, there's a lot. You can see they're all watching this, and they're uh, <laughs> cheering on the fight. Asher, like, like t taps Esther on the shoulder. What? We've been hit by Harder. He'll be fine. I can pick him back up, and I can kick the dwarves' ass if we need to. Yeah, but at the same time, if he hurts guys to the point of unconsciousness, we're gonna have a fried fucking dwarf. Alright, guys. You've used your normal action. You got a hasted action and bonus action. What are you doing? I'm going to take off the ring. And oh. 
throw it off. Him throw, slap throw, him. Throw it in my pocket. And I'm just gonna. Just gonna. All right. Rush. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You you catch him as you rush. Um, the overhand fist comes over there. Are you doing flurry of blows? Yeah. And also, uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm also gonna Judas effect a couple of these. Okay, let me roll the first one. <laughs> You're just hoping you get one of these stuns, aren't you? Yes. It's his best chance. I'll say it's one in three. Mm -hmm. Speaking of one in three. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, yeah. so the first attack's done, so give me an extra 1d20 for that second. So basically, yeah, so basically what happens there is I just run up, I grab him by, I grab him by the head, bring my knee up, and bring him down onto the knee. Yeah, and you, you see him, like, start to, like, drop to one knee again as he's... Uh, <laughs> Not doing great. So that's um, where as, as, as his done. Done. We're doing we're doing triple advantages, right? Uh, a double, but yes. Double, yeah, we're doing double advantages, right? So I can put so I can stack both. Yeah, go for it. You got one extra attack if you want to do your your uh your blows. Yeah, sure. Um. Do you want to just have him do one more d20 to see if he gets a nat 20 on that second attack if the um, if the stunner was on the first? Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, Kai has a note, like, if you put him prone now, like, it makes no difference. You're already double advantage. Yeah. This fight really yeah. so, some bitch energy. Uh, you can definitely do the pile driver, just as a note, you won't get a third advantage. Oh, but you won't is. need it, so, uh, Kai's, how do you want to do this? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so basically, while he's, like, staggered, I'm gonna basically lift him up over my shoulders and above my head, so I have him in sort of a crucifix position, uh, but, yep. so, like, I have his arms hoisted, and he's, like, sort of, like, looking up at the sky, and then I'm just gonna run, and then <laughs> just... Fling him into a power bot and fling him into a pile driver. All right, so yeah, you basically like firemen's carry him over your shoulder, and you see a nearby wall where no one's kind of collected around and start rushing towards it and like fling him over your shoulder so that you've got his uh, no, no, no. Oh, wait, his I knees. Have, like, I have up. my arms and in sort of like a crucifix position over my head. Gotcha. Okay. Then yeah, then then you switch into a position to put his head more towards the ground and just slam him into the wall. And he drops, and he is very unconscious. Uh, and the crowd is loving this. Ash is gonna walk walk over, put a boot on the side of his head, and cast cure wound. All right. Ash is gonna run. No, 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 let me get the pencil first. But what did he say? Let me get the three count. Can Ash? Can Ash? Asha, Asha looks down. One, two, three. Knockout. The dwarf doesn't argue. Yeah. Uh -oh. This is gonna run up and hug Kaius. Yep. And Kaius, like, ribs how, how are you showing off to the crowd here? I, I like, have my hands up. I have my hands up, I'm just like... <sighs> and I, like, just, like, loudest battle cry that he can. Just... <sighs> like, put, put, like, one, one foot up on the chest, like... Yeah! All right, give me performance. All right. Advantage because because he kicked this guy's fucking ass. <laughs> sure. Please, advantage. It might not be advantage because he's beaten to the within an inch of his own life. He ended it with grace. That makes it better. Ended it with grace. Okay. Yeah, that that it's gives him that gives him the, the fact that he didn't have a weapon gives him the underdogs. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> well, man. Oh, uh, no. So yeah, you see the you see the crowds like like kind of like cheering you on, but it, it you've had better nights. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have. You're also pretty sure your concussion's back. <sighs> pretty sure? You mean definitely? Definitely sure. Hey, uh, Ashta. In a sec. I think he Any... needs back all those concussions. Eh, that's about right. Look, I, look, I don't have a lot of spells left today, just... Uh, what spell was it? Uh, he used Lesser Restoration last time. Yeah. It's fucking... Yeah, so you just couldn't tap him with that. Range. T. I had to put it in. Don't judge me. That's fine. Alright, so yeah, um, God, you feel a fog start to clear from the front of your mind. It's just, you gotta be careful doing that nowadays. You're starting to get old. 
Old? <laughs> still in my twenties. Esther is still hungry. Well, hopefully that's done with. Well. She goes, eh? Eh? What? Oh, what? Did that get dropped? It was kind of a leg back there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, a, a younger dwarf lady, she walks up to Caius with a big tankard in her hand. She puts it down to and she goes, eh? Yeah. He grabs it, raises right. it in the air. Yeah! And, and that, that gets a bit of a better response, as, as you would just hear a couple dwarves in the crowd yell, BOOZE! Well, yeah, fighting in booze. Yeah, I'm, I'm officially these dwarves' favorite person at this point. <laughs> and people start to like help up Smokestack and get him to somewhere safe, and as he's starting to get up, and his eyes kind of open, I was gonna he say points to you, Caius, and he goes, Good man. Hard shoe. Hard shoe! Ah, uh, see, his fight is in his soul. I want you to roll a performance check just to save versus what you just fucking said, Sky. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> no, Sky. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Give me performance to save versus what you just did. Yikes. Twenty. God damn it! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no, that was it DC twenty? Gotta turn that API off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just as you kind of like say this, you just hear this for a second of silence, and it is quieter than you've heard this party be all day. No, Ross and then the Google. dwarves start howling. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, thank you, brother! Caius, you've been upstaged by a third-rate pun. <sighs> Sorry, my uh, career, really? What? Oh, shit, did I upstage Caius? <laughs> Just a little bit. Your performance is <laughs> almost twice his. Yes. No I got from a natural <laughs> 20 there. Yeah, that's, that's, about, that's about on par. <laughs> You're a bit out of practice. Gotta work on it more. Yeah. But as things start to settle, uh, then again, crowd, okay, we'll I think his career was kind of an asshole too. So you know. <laughs> um, but as things start to settle, look, oh, I was say, go ahead. Like Asha I'm quoting that by the way. Bias. He's like, "Good work." Now I know I could pick his ass. Good. <laughs> and then Kais, right then the haste F ends, and you just feel this wave of lethargy on you. It's just like ah. He would have like he would have like actively dropped it right there. Actually, Ooh. he felt it kind of waning. And he's just like, and now, <laughs> and there goes the head rush. Esther, you see just the blood I drain from Caius's face, and he just swoons for a second. I did. Esther will hold him up. I did. Alcohol. Better than a. Thought you straight edge, motherfucker. I think that's I think the last thing right you now. need at the moment. I'm all for a good time, but I think right now you need some sleep. Sure. So, what um, are you guys doing? I suggest we get going back to the where our rest is tonight. Not, we get Kai settled. Not just yet. We do need to see if we can find members of our squads and see if they're willing to take up the job that we'd be Perhaps pursuing. we should get Kai settled uh, first, and then the rest. As a reminder, that. you are meeting with them in the morning. Oh, I, I thought we had to oh. talk to them and get them to meet us in the morning. Oh, I didn't know that. No, no, they will be brought to you in the morning. Got it. You're okay. going to have to convince them at that point. I misunderstood the order of operations there. Yep, sorry about that. All right, Rosalind's kind of looking towards the party. Can she hear music or anything anywhere? Oh, yeah, you can hear, like, bands of various genre and quality playing from many different directions. <laughs> various quality. I would like to just briefly go dance go listen yes a little bit perhaps um, i'd ask that i'd ask if any of you wanted to join but i'm not sure caius is really up to it at the moment esther's gonna hand caius off to oh, my dad's shoes esther's oh, gonna hand caius off to ashta grab rosalind by the hand and probably begin to drag her towards the nearest <laughs> Thing is going to follow them. Just Ro Rosalind will reach out at uh, blindly and grab whoever's closest. Maybe Ashta. Let's grab Ashta and drag him along behind as well. He's not. Right. He's not Kais, we got like a conga line of like of Rosalind, Ashta, Kais just being dragged along. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably yeah. somewhere. I assume uh, Yemma 
uh, probably takes Kai's, right? Because, you know, being able to heal and the like. Oh, it's, yeah, Yemma's Paladin. It's like, well, yeah. But, there we go. Asha, look over to Yemma. It's like, so you can do healing, yeah? Remember to push Tocti. Oh, yeah, Yemma. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hello. There we go. There we go. Uh, okay. Healing. Yep. You got it. <laughs> Let me just pull up. You know, you know healing, right? <laughs> that is a loud silence there. Shut up. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what do I do? Do I press medicine? Yep. Do I... Uh, what yeah, do you want to do? She's asking oh. you a question. <laughs> um, okay. I'm healing Caius. What does Caius need? No, Asha is asking you if you know healing. This is a conversation that's happening oh. first. Oh! Big <laughs> mood. <laughs> You'll get used to it, don't worry. I do know healing! I do! In the uh, conversation, yes, I do know healing. I'm so... Oh, God. You're good, man. And he kind of, like, holds Caius, Caius up by the hair. <laughs> I'm this first uh, time. You see Caius as he's... Caius is significantly taller than Ashta. You see Ashta basically holding the top of um, Caius's, like, uh, half-shaved head. Um, he's holding the hair side. And you're pretty sure Caius's knees are either made of liquid right now, or he is just that much out of it. Oh, I'll give him some healing. His his what are made of liquid? Knees. His knees. His knees. Oh, he can like barely stand. He's just not having a good time. Okay. Yeah, let's see what you're half health because of the whole body. Yeah, kind of like, he kind of like whole, like leans Caius over towards you. Okay. <laughs> you get I guess hand I take the monk. Yeah, I take Caius. Go ahead and um, add one Caius to your inventory. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might as well. Okay. Alright. And the party starts walking towards the nearest music. Excuse me, as the as best mu- Well, no, Esther's sorry, leading. Sorry, the best music. Esther's leading. Where's Esther leading us? What is your fancy, Lady Rosalind? What music do you design? Uh, can she give a listen and see if anything tugs her ears? Sure, roll, uh... I'll roll perception for this. I, I want to say roll a taste check. Uh, I don't know if it's a taste check, because that's very, very subjective. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Alright, go ahead and just roll perception in that case. Or pass if your choice. And I'll just roll it too! Alright, <laughs> you hear this, like... Oh my god, I was waiting for someone to do this. You you roll... Sorry, <laughs> you hear that's this music being played... As well as some like like strange vocals, and it's not singing or party songs that you heard before. It's not like a singular um, performer or an orator of some kind, but they're doing it to like a very nice rhythm, almost like a kind of like a slam poetry style thing. It's it right. Sound like something people would could dance to. Yeah, it, it's very lyrical and like a whimsy almost. Okay, that sounds slam poetry. Different. You say that sounds oh, interesting. Slam poetry. Tea. Don't get us started. Let's let's go see what that is. And she's gonna direct them towards whatever this is. All right. As you guy looks over, he's like, "Are you sure?" I I don't know. I've never heard something like this before. Neither um, have. I. You, you know what? Let's go check. Let's go check it out. Exactly. Sounds different. Let's try. Asher's not look convinced. <laughs> All right. So as you guys head over there. Um, and it is still, like, actually a very nice rhythm, honestly. Like, you probably could dance to it. It'd be a bit slower paced for now, but nothing, like, romantic. Just a slow kind of, uh, like, bounce along kind of thing. But as you, um, get up to where the orator or musician's there, you look, and, Rosalind, do you remember Forever Ago in Peduncle? Oh, no. The Bard of oh. Charm View. Oh. It's him! Oh, it's him! no! Does Zinia yeah. recognize him too? Yes, you do. <laughs> Zinia! You see the faces just fall. Ashra's oh. nose itches for some reason, and he's and he, like his trigger finger's kind of twitching. He doesn't know why. I. Uh, are you sure uh, you want to stay? No, Rosalind? let's find Do you see him else. lock eyes with you, Rosalind? <laughs> no, we're going. Zinia's pulling, Zinia's pulling Rosalind's arm back. We're, we're she going to She smiles a very weakly, turns, turns, and tries to leave. With the others. Oh, so, you see him blow a kiss as he continues on with his uh, spoken word. <laughs> you bought him how much gold worth of? Oh, that was. Don't ask. Is, is, is that a DC seventeen perception? Uh, passive perception. 
visible? Oh yeah, you easily see it. He's not. Oh, okay. Okay, there's the sound of like cracking of the knuckles. <laughs> like what? Uh, is it? He just gives a wink to you, Ashton. Are we, cra- are we cracking knuckles? What are we doing? We dealt with him before. Just find it. Let's find another musician. <laughs> All right, Zine, <laughs> like, you're only perception. I'm still recovering from your concussion again. Are we, are we cracking knuckles? What's going on? All right, Zinia. Yeah. So as you kind of pull them away, you bring them towards a more uh, jovial and more typical music. Um, although the instruments are none that like you've heard very often before. Uh, you hear a lot of, like, sitars and um, stringed instruments um, oh. in general. But here, instead of that, it's a lot more drums and what looks to be some kind of uh, bass. And some and what looks to be a trumpet? You're oh. pretty sure you just basically found jazz. <laughs> smooth <laughs> jazz. Oh, it's not smooth. It is jazz. Oh, God. Oh, it is. It's jazz. freeform jazz, isn't it? Uh, it could be. You don't know quite enough about jazz dance. All right. Yeah. Dance music. Reform jazz, where everything's no. made up and the, the hip notes don't matter. Esther's gonna grab Rosalind's hand and pull her into a swing. Yep. Uh, Rosalind's gonna go along. Does Esther know this dance? Uh, it's, honestly, it's people kind of just having okay. fun. Sounds good. So, is this a performance or dexterity or what is it? Let's go with performance. Fifteen. All right, so yeah, uh, who are you dancing with? Esther. Esther just pulled me, around. Mother. All right, Esther, give me a performance. I'm a... All I heard from that was no, and I'm confused. Eight. Oh, I said I'm rolling. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Can All Rosalind right. do so, her best to help Esther? She's proficient yes. in performance. She's going to try to guide Esther through this. Uh, that is typically yeah. typically in place of your check, but you are definitely helping her along and improving her dancing skills. Yeah, and as it goes on. Good lord, do they know? Esther's just a bad dancer. Yes. Can 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 uh, I roll in performance and try to help the dancing as well? <laughs> I mean, you can try to dance the guys if you'd like, drunk as he or like fucked up as he. Okay. It's a mannequin, basically. <laughs> yes. Okay, sounds a good. A mannequin that's really happy to be dancing. Okay. Can I roll it? Can I roll it? <laughs> yeah, both of you roll it. Uh, guys, go with disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, because I'm... Yes, 23. Oh, damn. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Woo. That's, a lot. that's hot. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, possible. Rosalind... Actually, Hold on, hold on. Is Ashta and Esther, sorry, Xenia, the last pair? Yes, Xenia is dry. Is Give dry. me your performance checks, both of you. Yes. Yeah. He's like, what, what is this? An attempt. An attempt. What a move. <laughs> I look okay. like, yes! like, just like super, like no. super injured and concussed. Caius can still bust a move better than Esther. Hell yeah. So, as Esther and Rosalind, you begin dancing. Rosalind, you're, you're doing your best to help Esther, who seems very intent on a very pro- provocative dance. Can, can I... Um, can you Rosalind kind of like, try to like, help her. One thing. Rosalind is, at some point during this, I going to ask it. Esther if she's trying to practice so she can impress someone special. And then maybe that's what make Esther, makes Esther trip over her feet. I don't know. Probably. Yes. Yes. And Esther, I was saying that because of your previous stripping. Anyways. Oh yeah, I forgot about the stripping. Oh, um, so Xenia and Ashta, <laughs> that's a sentence. Xenia and Ashta, you're that's just dancing quote. to it and enjoying it, man. Like, Ashta, at first you wouldn't expect to be a great dancer, but he's light on his feet and he seems to be in a relatively good mood as much as he can be. And Xenia, your mood matches his. Not fantastic, but you know how to dance and you take care of it. That being said, Yemma. You take Caius and his surprisingly um, light-footed mess that he has become and guide him along to this way complicated tango that Caius just kind of improvises and goes with, and it looks fantastic. A fucking mood. Amazing. <laughs> Caius, you have no idea what's happening, but you're trying your best to just dance with this lady. You feel like you're doing a good job, but she's just Great at it. Just remember what is quick. going Kaya on, small, man. Yemma Small. Yes. This is great. 
And she is leading that tango like any man will. <laughs> leading a tank. <laughs> leading a tank with somebody six three. I'm imagining Yemma doing the whole dip thing with Caius. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's more so oh, she sees Caius start to fall yeah. over and turns it into a dip. Yeah. He can, he, yeah, he can stretch back pretty far. Uh, yeah. Caius, as you do it, you feel your head smack against the ground with your dip and you come back up. Oh, oh no. Not hard, just enough to kind of be like, oh, shit. Yow. I know that concussion. Another. <laughs> At some point, there's going to be a partner swap. Yep. All right. Uh, let's well, Esther wants to dance with Ashta. Right. Okay. So Esther with Ashta. Who are you heading Caius after, Yama? I'm heading Caius off to uh, Ashta. Ashta's okay, there. so we got <laughs> Esther, Ashta, and Caius. <laughs> Wait, no, wrong. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's gonna be a. You can basically get tossed, Caius, Ashta. Oh god. Oh god, where am I going? And he like spins towards you as you and Esther kind of like. More so, Esther like pulls you along. Um, and I assume Rosalind, Xenia, and Yemma uh, link up there. Yep. Alright, give me another round of performance checks. Ashta's just gonna like catch Caius by the face. <laughs> oh, Xenia! <laughs> Is that for everybody? Oh, yeah, yes. give me a performance check. Oh, no. Oh, oh good no. lord! Oh my god! Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have Christ. found Yemma's yeah, music. Damn! We found oh, yeah, Yemma's brother. What the fuck? Play it armor or not? My god damn! Advantage, obviously, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now okay, that, so like, the partner swap and trying to dance with three people doesn't go immediately as well as any of you were Ow. hoping for, except for Yemma, who grabs um. Rosalind and Xenia. Uh, Rosalind trying to find her feet, and Xenia just doing her fucking best, but kind of like tripping into Yemma's arms. How are you doing this? Um, How are you doing this? And then out of instinct, just Yemma again dips Esther and just starts with this waltz. Can I and Esther? you guys dance for a while. Wait, Yemma's dipping who? Conrad. It's Esther's uh, with... Can I, te can I, I technically use Xenia. the mind yeah. to try and get rid of the disadvantage? Roll me, first of all, a wisdom check versus trying to find a moment of peace during a jazz dance yeah. session. Fair enough. A wisdom check? Yep. Or wisdom save? Check. Like, you're trying to That's meditate during jazz or size here. Yeah. Right. yeah that shouldn't it shouldn't be a disadvantage, so it's a 15 instead. So, you manage to kind of find the calm and, like, catch yourself enough to kind of, okay, you're good now. Okay, good. No more disadvantage. So, yeah, that wasn't a normal check. Believe it or not, Caius is wise. <laughs> um, so, I assume one more partner swap goes on? Yep. Yeah! Um, Alright. Rosalind's gonna grab Ashta. Ashta. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There right. we go. Caius, who are you going to this time? I guess Esther, then. Go for it. And Yemma, you're with Xenia as you finish kind of like guiding them along to make sense of where their feet are. Oh, Xenia really needs this. <laughs> yes, okay. You kind of like try to give yourself a bit of, uh... <laughs> Divine guidance to your dance session here. Can I add acrobatics <laughs> into, into my dance? No, this is full on performance. I'm sorry. Full on performance. Okay. If this was like break dancing, that's another thing. Oh, there Esther. we go. There we go. Oh, Rosalind. Damn. There we go. Oh, Xenia. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and Esther. Uh, hold on. Okay. So Esther and Caius it was Wait, right. Where's Yemma? Where's Yemma? Esther and Caius. Oh, yeah, give me Yemma. Come on. Show it to me. Let's go. Cool. Yemma, do you think you can dance? Come on. Come on, one more. You've got a streak going. Wait, one, one more performance check? One more performance yes. check. Yes. We switched back. has got talent. Yandy's got talent. Amazing. This is what we do. There it is! Oh, oh damn! Yeah, but a fucking party! Oh! I am fucking up the dance floor right now, y'all. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hot Hot up, and bro. you take Xenia and the absolute mess they've become in your arms. Um, and just twirl them around and just turn them into your play doll at this point on how to dance. And Aww. in the end, it looks good. Xenia, you are so dizzy. 
I think I stepped on your toes like 20 times. I'm sorry. Ooh. Thankfully, she's wearing plate armor, so it doesn't hurt as much. Oh. Order Esther and Caius. What is that train wreck? <laughs> what is Esther. That? You try to dance with Caius, and you see him like pause for a second to kind of like catch his, uh, uh, his center of gravity. <laughs> Unfortunately, you were in the middle of being dipped, and he pauses, and you just whoop, onto the ground. Yikes. You fuck! Ow! Listen, man, let me find my zen. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. Alright, we're also under 28. How are you dancing? Good lord. Hell if I know! Alright, so you just take it to a bit of a... It's like, almost like a two-step or a tap dance or something. I can't think of the right thing there. I don't know. She gets hold of, she gets hold of uh, Ashta, big Ashta grin, no and immediately weapon. finds what the hell she's doing. She finds her feet, finally. And Mostly they're under do, Ashta's. What is the... Fine. No, what, what, what? <laughs> you two are dancing together. Go! No, Ashta does not know what's going on. His 7 oh, versus yeah. that 28. Yeah, you're yeah, no. doing your best, man, I but... I took the time to pause to look at Ashta, Ashta and Rosalind, like, oh, you. That's what helps him find his inner peace. <laughs> the sight of Ash dancing. <laughs> you are the only person who can find peace in what Ash is doing. Ash is fucking it is tackling at Ash dancing, bud. Yep. <laughs> that being said, Rosalind is is making it look pretty good. Like, every time he kind of does a fault, she works it and she improvises it to just work things out. And you guys thought Yemma was good before, Rosalind is messing things up in the best way possible. Fucking it up! Fuck it up! But as the bards begin to slow down their music, and they take their bow, uh, the music stops. At least around you guys. <laughs> I just gotta, like take a step back. It's like, oh, th thank you, but I that was I'm. Th you did fine. Maybe we can use a little more practice. I know you're lighter on your feet than that. That practice. Uh, oh. Ashley, you did wonderful. You did great, buddy. Very good. He has this, like, semi-nauseous look on his face. <laughs> um, We're not teasing. Yeah. Come on. It's team building. Should we get going to rest now? I'm pretty, sure I've, I'm pretty sure I've heard of uh, various fighters and warriors using dancing as training. Makes yeah, them that's quicker. dance fighting. It's good. good. Very dexterous. Uh, Maybe we should do this more often. Ashta, hear a tiny voice yeah. next to your other well, please? Hey, maybe you can make up for all the times you hit her with the sword. Oof. He just kind of like, like looks around and he's like, hey, uh, sure. And he just kind of like walks off. <laughs> <laughs> no, just Caius is slack jawed at that, like, oh, sure. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> but Esther. Once we get back, uh, if you'd like to, if you'd like to show what you've uh, learned and practiced, I'm sure there's somebody Just who'd like to see it. Esther has gone beat red. Gives a slight nod. Please to follow Ashta. And Rosalind just sweeps off after both of them, looking very smug and happy with herself. Caius also sweeps off after them, looking very smug and happy. He won a fight and did pretty well at dancing. So that's a, that's, yeah. He's having a good day. Yeah. yeah. He's up one concussion, but that's okay, that's normal for him. I'm usually up, he's usually up like five, that's amazing. That it's uh, only one. There's the Grand Sorcerer, and then there's the Grand Master of the Concussion. We all have our abilities. Kai's just happens to come out best when he's concussed. Concussed Master. <laughs> it's like Drunken Master, but more exactly. medically advised. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, you guys head back to relative peace and quiet, I assume, of either the Dwarven home or of the palace. Do we want to head um, towards the palace? Can we take, like, a quick few minutes? Yep. I was just trying to figure out where you guys are going first, but yeah, we're gonna take yep, a quick five minutes. Alright, um, yeah, we'll probably hit the uh, palace then. Yeah. I think we're about done for the night, unless there's, an unless there's like, one last d20 on the way. D100? Let's uh, roll a d100. That's what I mean. Oh, I'll do it. Yes. Alright, go for it. 66. Okay, when we get back, I'll tell you guys what happens. Alright. Alrighty. Quick five minutes. 
I would just ask if we could have like a short little thing that after everybody goes to sleep, I saw it's Aquarius out and they try to dance. We'll take care of that once you guys get to the palace. Oh, the thing do is, it, do it before oh. going to sleep, because I'm totally planning on having Rosalind use prestidigitation to do a little faint musical notes of the uh, yeah. jazz, whatever music. And, af and after everyone's asleep, Zinyo only rests four hours. Good luck. <laughs> Go for a slow dance, then. Other than that. Uh... You got an elf troll, you guys. She will sit quietly outside of the vase or hut or whatever. And she'll just play prestidigitation over and over. Gentle music flowing in. Yep, exactly. Yemma didn't roll below a 17 on all three dance checks. Yemma is amazing and I love her already. <laughs> My new daughter, you mean? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I start as suspicions, but at the same time, new child. Uh, yeah, Zine's just like, eh, Ty's like, oh my god. <laughs> I love. Wait, what? As much as the character has suspicions, I love Danya so much. I love you, T. Same. Thank you. I love you, too. Yeah. You guys are cutting in and out, but love y'all. That's not good. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I don't know if anyone really clicked it all, but that was totally the music I had going during that whole dance scene. Oh, the thing that you sent in the chat? I have not, because it would mess with the recording oh, yes, and be awful. Course. So, I'll check it out later. But it is jazzy as hell, and it's like, I'm just like, no, this has got to be it. <laughs> jazzy. Come That's on. some smooth shit, man. It's fucking Cantina Band. No. What is it no. with you and Cantina Band? I don't it's know what it is. good fucking song! No. <laughs> That's also not jazz. Jazz. I don't know what I want to know what it is. <laughs> John. Hey, no, 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 no. That's absolutely I know it jazz. is. Don't say it. <laughs> like jazz. Some really nice berry sax, though. Oof. We're all good. We're good, I think. Everyone ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Sound off. Do yes. You win? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Then let us begin. So, as you guys head back to uh, uh, Palace, you come across a strange looking old woman. Uh, sitting by the side of the road. Uh, crystal ball sitting on top of a little pillow. Yeah. Lots, lots, like, lots of beads. Hand, like... Like, you, you see that, like, at first the hand, like, goes to the crossbow and then, like, pulls it back down. <laughs> yep. Asha, Rosalind, Xenia. You've seen this woman before. Oh my oh. god, specifically? Oh, it's the fortune teller! Specific. It's the fortune teller from oh, Lucerne! Oh, oh, wait. Oh! From Lucerne! She gives you guys a big smile. 
Oh, what a surprise! Fantastic. Hello there, dearie. Well. <laughs> Good evening, then. Do you remember us at all? I do. Was my, uh, projection to watch out for prison accurate? Hmm. Ash, like, pauses and, like, gives her a look. It's like, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Bad to hear. The cards are not always clear. But, um, I see you've come off well and with some new friends in tow. Is that correct? Indeed. Mostly old friends, but they just weren't with us at the time when we last saw you. Uh, I think I would have remembered the uh, one on fire and the purple one. Hello. She locks eyes with you, Yemma. Hi. She goes, you're an interesting one. Might not know your name there, dearie. Um... Hold on, what happened? <laughs> Please repeat what you said. So the fortune teller, who seems to know some of the party, is, okay. she like looks at you and says, Might I know your name, dearie? Okay, uh, my name is Yemma. Just replies not normally and calmly. Uh, Yemma, would you like your fortune told? I'm curious to see what they say about you. Yes. Well, go ahead and sit. And she points to a stool sitting in front of her uh, little setup there. She takes her hand, flips it down, seems to look at the palm. Uh, kind of glances a bit deeper and l looks you up and says, You're, um... You're not from here, are you? In the grand scheme of things. No, I'm not from here. And yet, you seem to give off the feeling of home, which is interesting. Like you, uh, like you aren't lost. Interesting. Most people who travel this far seem to be very lost. I can assure you I'm not lost, but thank you. And, uh... Lost you may not be, but where are you going, dear? Do you know your direction? Yeah, I'm a little stuck on that question. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I thought. Well, um, she kind of like pats her hand. She goes, don't worry. Seems like you've got some guiding hand, pushing you where you need to go. And, um... I feel as if things will be... stable. I feel like, uh, the turmoil surrounding many of your friends here doesn't affect you nearly as closely. Hmm. All in all, good fortune. She pats her hand and gestures towards the rest of the group for someone else to sit down. That's the uh, Yemma smiles. Yemma is... Did you say Yemma smiles? Yes. Okay. Oh, Yemma smiles, okay. Sorry, I think I cut out a little bit there. We all did. Um, who's gonna sit down? That's the uh... Alright, so Esther, you sit down, she kind of gives you a smile, she says, uh, don't see any Janasia down here. Happy to see you. What'd you say? Uh, don't see many Janasia down here. So uh, happy to see you. It's lovely to meet you. She, she kind of like takes her hand. She looks it up and down. She sees the uh, tattoos on you. She goes, hmm. Uh, matron, yes. That be correct. Uh, I lived with the Janasi for a while. I'm glad I still remember what some of those mean. And, uh, it's not up to many people live here. No, not up north like here, or out east this way either. Uh, do, have you recently come across a, uh, 
a new addition or someone important in your life who was not around before. I, I sense some powerful new relationship soon. Oh. Well, I suppose you're not wrong on that aspect. Well, uh, nurture what you have as I see things going very well. And, um, be careful when you go to your ancestral home. Things may not be as they seem. Unfortunately, I think I already knew a bit of that. I see you're not the only one who can see in the future over here. <laughs> she smiles, mm -hmm. pats her hand, and looks up again for the next person. Who else? Purple one. I haven't seen you before. Would you like to sit down? Sure. She looks up and down and says, had a bit of a rough day? Your <laughs> shirt is like covered in blood. Give me on top. Well, uh, hopefully this helps. And you see that she like draws a small rune into your wrist and you heal about 15 hit points. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Just something to take the edge off. And she, as she goes like to once more flip the hand over and like read down the lines, uh, you see her eyes kind of go white for a second and then come back. And she goes, Huh. Beware of old enemies. Uh, seems like today's fight will not be the only one in nearer times. Huh. Well, that means. Huh. Oh, and, um. One of your eyes is going to be lazy. Is that normal? I don't think so. <laughs> she like, taps you on the head and actually she casts Great Restoration so. on you. Oh my God. John, are you deafened? Hey, can you hear us? He's got a little deafened icon on. Yeah. A little deaf boy. Well. Well, rest in pieces. <laughs> There he goes. Oh, fuck. Yeah. There, there we go. Out. Sorry. Uh, where'd you last hear me? Uh, your eyes going lazy. Is that normal? Okay. Uh, she goes, like, marks on your head a small rune, and she casts like, Greater Restoration on you, and you feel, like, the kind of last effects of that uh, concussion going away. Oh. Oh, wow. And your vision clears, which is nice, because you did start to notice that you were getting a cross-eyed. Huh. Now. I would, uh, not a fortune, just um, a bit of advice. Uh, go see a doctor of some kind. Okay. <laughs> You're fucking concussed, Caius. Yeah, but I've never had to deal with them. It hasn't been much of a problem. We will get him to a doctor. Please do, and she kind of like pats your hand and actually like helps you stand up. <laughs> Um, and she kind of opens her hands toward the last three, and she goes, And the returning guests, would you, um, would you like your fortune told once more? Is much likely to have changed? You never know. Hmm. Well, I suppose one thing my, may have passed, uh, let's, let's find out. And Rosalind will sit down. And she takes your hand and once more presses against it, feels up the lifelines. Which is. <laughs> bit of uh, confusion, I'm sensing. Not sure why. I feel like you've. Uh, don't know your place, yes? Uh. Hmm. Perhaps. Well, uh, at the very least, I sense great things from you. But it will not be an easy journey there, dear. But no more warnings about jail, so hopefully you've gotten past that chapter. <laughs> oh, that's all comforting. Thank you. Beware of uh, future bonds that may weigh you down regardless. 
jail or otherwise. Weird blue man. Uh, I will try to be careful. Though given how the last one, uh, last warning, didn't at all go the way we'd foreseen or expected. Mm. Still, we'll be careful. Constant awareness, my dear. She pats her hand. She'll get up she looks up to Z She looks up to Xenia and Ashta. Xenia will you as well? gently kneel down. Hand out. She traces the fingers and she goes, Hold on. <laughs> she, she goes to the live and goes, Sorry, I, I have met you before, yes? Indeed you have. Hello? It's not the same hand I held last time, but I do sense the same mind. It's oh, they've, they've changed a little bit. Same soul, different vessel, my dear. Ah, re reincarnation of a site of a corn? Mm -hmm. Not entirely. Oh, interesting. A different meat suit, if you will. I think I won't. <laughs> Actually, kind of like elbows Esther and it's like, okay, that's enough. She keeps looking at it. It kind of looks at the inferences. I sense a completely different uh, stage here. Uh, beware of your bonds, similar to the previous, but your promises are just as dangerous as your friendships. Oh, fuck. That being said... You have a certain uh, uniqueness to your soul, a form of blessing that was not there previous, but uh, it seems quite well settled. Well settled. Glad to hear. Uh, I, I, I do have one more reading, it's a bit uh, trivial though. Be wary indigestion. Ah. Well, oh, fuck. Oh, right. <laughs> That's... I'm not sure what that one means. I feel like that's best for you to figure out on your own personal journey. I will attempt to. Xenia becomes lactose intolerant. Shut up! <laughs> you can't run, for, run away from it, dude. You can't. It'll follow you in any D&D session. She taps her hand, looks up to Ashta, she goes, You willing for one more? One more, big boy? He has like a dead look over to Esther. I didn't say that out loud, Jesus! <laughs> you that did say that out loud game. with your voice in the chat. I did not, I did not say that in game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Esther is totally a different character that would never say that in a million years. Um... <laughs> Not out loud, she would have leaned over to Rosalind and whispered that, excuse you. Okay, okay, that's a save on Rosalind's part. Is that wisdom or <laughs> charisma to keep it in? Uh, that's, that's probably just wisdom. 18. <laughs> Alright, keep a pretty good hold. There's a cough. There's a stifle. She just kind of looked over to her husband. Vaguely caught off guard by the look of about to sneeze. <clears throat> vaguely caught off guard and probably turning slightly pink because, dear God, that phrasing. And... <laughs> it's in one of her fanfics, the stupid fucking weird books. Oh God, and you're right. It, it probably has been. Sorry. <laughs> he just he just sighs and sits down. He feels the hand. She looks at ah, no love yet. What a shame. Perhaps soon. She, she kind of like presses down hard, like the center of your palm, and goes, Well, that's a new one. And, Asha, that's like right over where you had stabbed through your hand previously. It feels uncomfortable. And she looks up to you and she says, Uh, a meeting of the minds. It's not always beneficial. 
I don't know what that means, but um, be careful who you get uh, in tune with. Anyone specific? I couldn't say. Just something near. Uh, in time, not proximity. Uh, you will... You will journey with someone. Alone. And... Not by choice. And hopefully you'll return stronger, but... This face kind of it is uncertain. Conrad, I don't like this. Here, lady. Sorry, I can't hear you there, Devin. Okay, you're gonna have to be more specific here, lady. Uh... Telling the future, it's not, uh... It's not like reading a book, unfortunately. Yeah. And he just kind of, like, digs into his pocket and uh, puts a gold piece on the table. She kind of just nods. It's appreciated. Be careful, please. That's, uh... Never seen that kind of reading before. You know, like looks at his own hand and just like turns it side to side and it's like yeah. yeah but I meet new people every day it's not unusual to find something new well um, I think it's time for these old bones to rest hope you guys enjoyed the uh, celebration <laughs> Asher kind of like grabs Caius by the hair again and just like I think it's time for stupid bones to rest too and the rest of us as well. It is that time. Thank you. May, may we meet again, man? Yeah. Uh, ow, 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 ow. Okay. Yeah. He's got the, he's got the armor on. That's like a full gauntlet in the hair. Oh, oh, just yeah. He's uh, on the yep. yep. We'll uh, say goodbye and head off. All right. And, and like have like before they go, he kind of like turns back like. Not following us, are you, lady? Um, not intentionally. That's a very chance meeting the second time. You'd be surprised at the things I've seen. It's not unusual for you to meet those who need guidance, especially not more than once. Just if I see you on the third. Never mind. And he walks off. Well, I hope you pay as well as you did this time. She kind of just waves at you. Keeps walking. Alright, so you guys head into the palace now? Yep. Rosalind's pulling out the token we were given. As the guards, uh, so you guys walk up, uh, dwarves, um, they look at you, uh, kind of glance at the pendants and go, uh, I'll... All six of you. Uh, we were promised a place to stay for the night. We're heading out on a bit of an expedition in the morning. <laughs> you see him raise an eyebrow and he goes, Oh, the prince been busy. All right. Um, Ashton. Can I incite that? What the heck? Go for it. Eight. Nope. I got nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's dwarves. He's wearing a pretty full face helmet, too. It's you can see, like, his eyes and, like, a little bit of his nose, but that's about it. Okay. Anyway, I interrupted to something. Um, be careful, okay? He kind of, like, raises an eyebrow. Pardon? He kind of, like, raises an eyebrow. Just... Sometimes seers are a lot more... I understand that you want specifics when it comes to fortune telling, but unfortunately, sometimes seers can't see the details. They only see the general line. However, depending on the choices we make, futures are able to change. Just be careful. Okay? I at least appreciate the sentiment. But I can make my own future. Thank you very much. And he kind of like stretches his arms above his head. 
That's I what this whole you. thing's about, isn't it? Exactly. That's just what I'm trying to say. Be careful, but don't allow a simple reading to consume you. He kind of like gives a look. He's like, she's vague and flighty, just show it because she was lo- just like she was last time. I'm just wondering wh- which editor I have to look out for. Oh, no, believe me, I understand. One of my sisters is a seer. It's not something that can be helped, unfortunately. Kind of like Chris never, and again, just like, oh, that's why you're. Got it. Yes, one of my younger sisters. She was chosen to be a seer. Still in the desert? Most of them are, I believe. None of them have come of age since I've been gone. Is Rosalind close enough to hear this? Yeah, probably. I assume this is why you guys like walk into the rooms you're escorted to. At least, no. Mm -hmm. Larks is old enough now. He'll be on his healer's pilgrimage. Do you have many siblings? (laughs) Oh, yes, I do. Many siblings. I'm one of ten. Really? Yes, I'm the second eldest. Molotov is above me, and there's me. I'm sorry, what? Molotov. He can't, he can't wait. Whoa. Asher is aware of the concept, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the... Like the... In fact, Molotov is a uh, primordial word. It is from Ignan. Huh. Molotov. I like the drink. Yeah. I'm aware. Drink. Whether... No? I'm scared yeah. to ask now, what are the other names? I'm scared to ask, yeah. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Fuck, I don't have my text. book on me. No, I you don't started have my book this, you me. should have been prepared. <laughs> it was a little out of the blue. Molotov, incendiary, and Nuke. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> what? Oh, and Greg. I forgot. Well, oh, Big Brother Napalm. So, it's like, what? We're gonna, here, brief quick, we're gonna skip the names for a hot second, but, uh... A hot know, second? Jimmy Tabasco, you to know... Fair, most of them are my half-siblings. There's three of us from one father, and four of us from another father, and then... No, five from another. Is that a common then, family setup? Uh, <laughs> no. My mother just doesn't seem to have the best luck in them. I meant more so just lots of siblings. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> I guess it's like kind of like a light grimace on his face at that. Insinuating that, that the people of been with Esther's mother have bad pullout. What? Stop. Jesus, John. <laughs> I don't think that's what she was implying. <laughs> Ash's arms like twitches and hits at, hits uh, Caius in the nose. He's like, "Whoa, must have happened." I don't know what happened there. Like, yeah, okay. Um. Well, no. Uh, kids. A lot of children are very common, especially with uh, <laughs> mortality rates. Uh. It's it's common. I mean, the deserts are fairly dangerous, and my tribe is the biggest of the rollers. We travel everywhere, whereas the other tribes are more stationary. They have a higher life expectancy. It's hard to look after a lot of little ones when you're moving around so much. It's why matrons exist. Guess my uncle's lucky he only got me. That is true. I mean, my god, if there were two of you, I think the world would have exploded at this point. <laughs> he kind of like gives a weird look. If there were two of you, you could have shot and killed a god by now. Well, now I'm not sure if you're insulting him or praising no, him. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a compliment considering his life purpose is to kill the gods. Hmm. Regardless, I... To be honest, I'm very interested in hearing what it's like to grow up with so many siblings and I guess just people around. Well, We've got a lot of only children here. Yeah, Zena well, has a few. Really I'm 
we've met Xenia's family, but ten. Guys, do you have any? Yeah. No, not that I know of. Oh, yeah. That's three. Well, I'm, yeah. I don't, Pierce hasn't mentioned anything, although I don't know if I should count them in this, really. Yemma, do you have any siblings? <laughs> Ashka looks over, it's like, oh, alright, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, it's better than being actively tracked as a threat, probably. Yeah, that is the latter. I don't have much memory of my past. Uh, Not right. Hey guys, Amazing, right? Eh? It's an <laughs> L. How long have you had? How far back can you remember? Um, I can remember up to a yeah, year, should... two years ago. Ash so takes a like, drink of water I'm... and follows it normally. He's like, okay. I was half expecting two weeks. Two years? <laughs> yeah, so I was still... Uh... Did you have an accident? I don't think they're at liberty to say. No, it wasn't an accident. I think it was just part of everything. Uh, with... Your patron? Yeah. I understand. Well, patron's a loose word here. Well, a patron can mean, like, ugly figures. Yeah. Ah, I guess. Well, with any luck, let's hope that your dad didn't steal your memories, shall we? God knows. Xenia. Mm-hmm. You get a fun little voice in the back of your head. Memories. She goes, Ah, the memories of those locked away. And just the voice fade. Well, Rosalind, if it does help, if we ever do end up going with my tribe, I can show you a lot of the activities we used to do as children. I'd love to see them. Oh, you'll love sand surfing. <laughs> All right, I don't know what that is, but it sounds interesting. Have you ever heard of sand dunes? Uh, yes. Uh, remember, we were in the south, near Valeri. Um, there were dunes of sand. She, was, right. more beach. she wasn't there for that. She was dead. I was oh, dead. Right. <laughs> Bugger. All right, yeah, Rosalind says that and then remembers. And then... I should go. Yeah, Ashley looks over. She was, uh... Oh, yes, I you was were. Dead. You were indisposed. I wouldn't have said that. I was but... dead. Nah, it's not a good phrase. For... That's not a good word for yeah, it. Yeah, you were being composted. <laughs> You're indisposed and decomposed. <laughs> My meat suit far. was unoccupied. <laughs> Regardless. Uh, yes, I uh, sense that. something. Mm -hmm. Well, generally when you turn anywhere from between 8 to 12 years old, you get your own sandboard. Usually it's handed down by a sibling who ends up leaving the tribe. So mine, I believe is currently it was on hold for my youngest brother cole he must have it <laughs> after like flinches <laughs> all right what flint oh stop uh cole and garnet they're my youngest two siblings sorry cole and what garnet garnet okay garnet red okay <laughs> Fire. Fire. Yeah. she's mm. named esther a flammable liquid guys yeah, but there's like plot, like it's not a common thing. Also, does Esther, he say Molotov, Tabasco? Also, real quick, does he say fire out loud? Wait, does who? Do Ashta? You said, oh, got right, fire. Yeah. After uh, 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 Yeah. No. Sure. Uh, no, they both take after their father. He's an ethnogenasi. He's from the tribes of the mountains. Interesting. Cole. I was going. Uh, he to just ask... like he just like pinches the bridge of his nose. Of course. I was going to ask if the tribes were generally of uh, mostly one element, or if there was a full mix. If it was like cities. Oh. Or... Uh, well, it depends. Honestly, my tribe going is on... a mix of everything. It's going on our assumption, I assume that earth and fire would be common in a desert. No. 
Well, Earth is more common towards the edges of the desert. Uh, you'll find them more in the mountains, in the swamplands. Water, again, you'll find more at the coast. But because my group is the Travelers, you'll find an amalgamation of Genasi kind. As well as tieflings and just wanderers in general. Anyhow, sand surfing, uh, a board is involved? Oh, yes. It's a magnificent thing. It's a piece of... We usually pick it up when we're along the outskirts with one of the trading um, outposts. We polish it ourselves, you shape it yourself, you carve it yourself, and you basically suit it to you. Every time it gets passed down, new modifications are made. So mine was passed down to me. Actually, no, mine was an original. And now mine is passed down. But, uh... No, you basically surf, but on sand. I don't quite know what surfing is. Uh, you get to the top of a high sand dune, you take a running start, you throw the board down, you jump on the board, and you surf all the way down. Oh, sledding! No, yes, What's I've that? done that with it's snow. Like oh, um... No, uh, we're I gonna forget. Sl- we're gonna have to show you that, in fact, um, once... Yes, you're from the desert, you don't know snow as much. Once You've snow never gets seen very... snow. Once... No, she's seen sledding. snow. You've seen snow. It was... You of were there for I the first snow. snow. But once the snow gets very thick on the ground, you find a hill, and you have a board, or a dish, or just something that can slide. A shield. Yes. Uh, and uh, you do pretty much what you just described. You put it on the ground, jump on, and coast down the hill. Only you more sit than stand. She oh, yes. Stand. Oh, some stand of the stand. really fancy... Um, some of the really fancy oh. boards are enchanted. So, depending on where you stand on the board, it's an extra boost of speed. Some of them you can enchant with... Just to give you a bit of a, a boost of height. My favorite is to do flips. <laughs> the dwarf leading you guys, he kind of looks back and he goes, Ah, that's nothing. I mean, you guys have ever done mountain surfing, have you? Oh god, no. No, but I've heard of it. Oh, it's dangerous. Is that just uh, yeah. snowboarding? Oh, no, 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 we don't wait for the snow. Is it as on the bear solid road. as it sounds? It's dangerous, but it's fun. Oh, Those god. up there on top of uh, the Citadel. Every once in a while, you get one. You get one of them just rocketing down fast. Listen, I'm as I'm a big fan of land? fast headed, but uh, not to that degree. Uh, most of the boards they use, well, shields they use, uh, come with feather ball enchantments. Just you know, for when you need it. But uh, you know, it's a t- test or might. That's how they haze the new guys. Oh, of course. I know my youngest siblings as they come of age. Most likely, my father. Well, their father will probably take them. Uh, of course, no, my mother will cover them in sigils. Yeah, no. They usually just toss the new guys with the shield and the feather ball enchant and say, Good luck! And, <laughs> you, you know, we have a little, we have a little place near uh, the opening I of the I, I, I thought my hazing, I thought my hazing methods were bad. Okay. Eh, most of them live. <laughs> I was just kind of like, like shakes his head and like scrunches up his face, like, right, okay, oh hey, it's the door, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are eventually brought in. He goes, uh, yeah, don't mind the decor. Um, and he opens up the door for you. Okay, what's you the decor? We're immediately specific. minding. Where's the decor? Um, so it is relatively normal, okay. except for the fact that there was only one bed. And is in the middle of the room, and oh. is massive and shaped like a heart. <laughs> oh! Oh! oh. 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 No. That is what he meant. Oh. Oh. That. I think. And he just walked me? away. All right, Rosalind's brain just right. shut down for an instant here. She's I rather. I can sleep this. anywhere. I'm not. I was just gonna look at the bed, look at the it's party. It's huge, by the way. Look at the bed. Like, what measurements here? Like, 30 feet across. Christ! Well, I don't know about you, but I'm tired, and I'm sleeping on that goddamn bed. Whether or not you're comfortable enough to get over the fact that it's a heart, it's familial love, and it's just gonna take a swan dive onto the bed. It is so soft. That's fine, but, uh, I feel like I just learned something I didn't want to. Alright, Zinia's casting sending. (laughs) 
<laughs> Who are you sending to? Okay, come in here. <laughs> what are you sending? Rodier, what the, the fuck? fuck? What the fuck? Why is there a heart-shaped bed? And there's on only one. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah, no. Caius's legs give out from under him, and he slumps onto the bed. And just a really him. long. Uh, That's not the, helpful. Wait, is this bed. bed for all of us? Yes. So, as the spell oh. gets cast, you yeah. <laughs> get the response back, and he goes. Tell them to bring you to the backup room. I know oh, how it sounds. Sleep. Just. It has multiple. Zinia's gonna let the has multiple go what? To the hall. beds. Multiple beds. Zinia's gonna beckon the guard over. He looks and he goes, Yes? He said, to bring it, he said to bring us to the backup room. I don't know what that means. I'm very I'm sure. nervous. Ascending. Oh, magic. Right. Alright. Um, should I, I, I should I roll an investigation? What are you trying to investigate? Oh my god! I don't Tom. know! I don't know! What are you trying to find out here? Um, Terrible things. What are, What is the back room? Okay, roll insight in that case. Okay. I was just gonna look at Rosalind. What's so awkward about sharing the bed? It's... it's context. There's certain implications what? in the shape of it and the size and uh, oh, certain things that were said over the past day that I did not catch. Hey, he kind of like, into the bridge, like uh, you, I guess you're not part of the book club, huh? What club? I'll lend you some reading material. Is that the never... same time? Uh, it was never in the doing? book, Rosalind. It was, it was never in the book. It's only, right. it's only two people. All right. So, Yemma. And taking Esther aside to yes. explain the there was only one bed trope. And yep. also the I can't see what I rolled. If it is 23. Quick refresher, yeah. Esther's okay. gonna burst into laughter. Okay. So, so Yemma. One, one. From what yes. you can tell, just from reading how people are talking here in the context, and things you've heard before from the prince, um, you're pretty sure that the room that the guard assumed you guys looking for was the room where he took his um his uh his flings <clears throat> oh no ah. yep that is what <laughs> Esther is that's what Rosalind is busy explaining to Esther too and yep. why she's not comfortable with that bed even if she's okay with them all being in the same room and maybe even the same bed if need be but it's like not that one not that one specifically yeah. Yeah. so the guard kind of like waves you guys out and he looks at Kai and he goes oh hold on and he kind of like waves a wand and a floating disc appears you know, just load him onto it Esther will help him get on and she'll look to Rosalind just you're not used to sharing a room with many people are you? I've gotten used to it with you. Let's be very honest there. And again, it's not the fact of the room, it's the fact of that particular room and all the implications thereof. Oh! It's a room for sex, isn't it? Yes, yes exactly. How did you <laughs> <realize> that? <laughs> oh, Esther, oh, see, are you serious? See, this is why we have birthing tents. What? I feel like that's a very different that's, thing. I feel like it's just a tent with a sock on. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I should cleanse the room. I, I, I should like <laughs> cleanse the room. Hold on. I have I have holy water. I was gonna say if 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 if, 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 if the, the paladin cast the tent goes in evil and a desecrated place. <laughs> All you see is the imprints of chains, stains, and oh, I'm gonna leave it there. No, 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 there we go. I had to disconnect, reconnect. Everybody went silent. <laughs> how do I? How do I remove oh, we that? Not... Hey. I was just gonna look oh, at Ashta. Okay. Why are you embarrassed? I shut up, and he walks out of the room. Don't <laughs> to be embarrassed about. All it is is sex. 
Please tell me you're okay, following him in the guard to the other room as you're saying this. this oh point. yeah, she is. If she's I saying that, that about sex relations going sex, to each other, man. Esther, I don't understand um, what the big Esther, is. Esther, Esther, they have assume you? they assume we are going to have sex with Brown here. They assume we all are, including. That also means each other, and I. No. Oh God. Um, Zenith. Zenith. Rosalind's is ready to dress. Cease. No, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm seasoning. The, gu the guard is just giggling as he guides you guys down. Can we go to well, sleep? Well, I can say for most certain that is not a tribal thing. Esther. Esther, we're, we're going to take you aside at one point a few days from now and explain the distinct cultural differences on this subject. But for now, please just be quiet. Why would the guard's going, one... no, no, keep talking, keep talking. Why would more than two people want to have sex? Oh, you oh, see, God. dear. Oh, oh, no. Let's, okay. <laughs> the guard just kind of starts laughing and says, here's your guys' room, I'll let you handle that. I don't understand, there's only... He opens up the door um, and kind of waves you guys through. It's a much more, basically, like a barracks type thing. Rosalind goes to um, the first about... bed she sees, flops down on it, puts her head under the pillow. Uh, I, 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 should, like, I, I like as soon as he gets in the room, he he like he like stops for a second and he slams his hand against the door. It's like, is that what that frickin' favor he gave us is for? And he goes, well, uh, not specifically, but that's what it's um the most recently. Used oh, for. that's why he got embarrassed. It's most because it was for his sexual people. Oh no! Uh, uh, yeah, it's so much uh, fun. I uh, hate this. Uh, Both had a and John. Had uh, or has? Had. And uh, recently he's, uh, he's a new boyfriend that he's uh, having some fun with. So we assumed that you were just another one coming in. I apologize. <laughs> well, congratulations for him. It's All wonderful right. to have a new romance. You can deliver those congratulations yourselves, person. Asher's like is Asher's like 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 sliding his hand down his face like we gave that idiot fine. What do you say? Oh god. But if he has a new boyfriend, why would he want to have sex with more than one? We gave that idiot fame. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing and can we just go to bed? I'm confused. The guard like looks to Esther and goes, If you really want. You let your friends have their uh moment to relax. I'll explain the cultural side to you if you'd like. What isn't that? Uh, Potentially over a beer if you No! Uh, no. Yemma takes Esther's hand. Esther, we're coming in, we're going to sleep. Yeah, we're, we're time. And Esther, you get dragged away. Yeah. So the guard kind of just waves laughing. He says, Oh, you guys can't take a joke. And he closes the door behind you. <laughs> Esther closes the door me. first. <laughs> Guys, what are you flashbacking to? You don't want to know. Okay, fair enough. Okay. I'm Pete Nonstyle. I'm I, I compared this guy to Shawn Michaels. I I don't even know at this point. Asha walks over to like 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 Rosalind has the head under the pillow. He like walks over to the next bed, like puts his knees to his chin, and then the wings just go around him and cover him in a ball. <laughs> Is it a normal thing for Aww. you people to have sex with more than one person? No, 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 no. no. Sorry, Thing. What do you mean a pride thing? How is it a pride to have sex with more than one person at the same time? Well, yeah, talk about lions. This is how pride works. Yeah, that is. It is how pride works. If you can hey, bet guys, more than one you... person in one go, then you're happy deemed, pride. you know. <laughs> happy pride month! Oh my god! That yeah. is not what this is. Oh god! You have a very odd version of pride. Yeah, it's not it's not technically pride, it's more being Guys, if you keep continuing this conversation, I'm gonna rattle your brain around in the skull way more than it's been before. Are you embarrassed I, because I know, you've I'm had this sorry. experience? I'm just having I'm really bad flashbacks. Okay, I'm gonna Have you had this experience? Is that why you all are embarrassed? I was no. just like I, no, like, no, we're not talking about this. I should have no, just like thinking like okay. if I had my fucking no. feign right now, I'd learn the silent spell as quick as I could. <laughs> you have no idea how much fun I'm currently having. No, we have some <laughs> idea. So you, you wave your hand, and Esther, there is no sound coming out from around you. You can't hear anything. You can't say anything that is audible. Oh, she starts with hand gestures. 
After a moment, you can also Rosalind, go, we don't have to look at it. <laughs> Rosalind will kind of take the pillow up off her ear, realize it's quiet, pull her head out. You can see yeah, Esther saying things, but there's nothing coming out. Thank you, made sure whoever that the, like, did that. Seeing you made sure that the, like, edge of the bedroom, the radius, was, um, that it wasn't in, because you used to cast some sendings. Yep. Yeah, no, you've basically got, like, uh, pretty much only Esther in there. Esther? I'm pretty sure someone on the street's probably really confused right now. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yes, yeah, funny, as I said. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Sorry, go first. No, just there's some guy walking by, and he's just like, so anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> wait, what the hell was that? No, you see Esther because of that, just kind of goes, close her mouth. The person like, goes silent and lines frantically. Just, she's really confused, and she looks actually kind of sad, because she doesn't understand why you made her go quiet. He's going to break the concentration of the spell and just go for later. Oh, really tired right now. Oh, why did you just say so? And she'll go Esther, to her bed. We've asked multiple times for you to cease the line of conversation. You didn't. Because you didn't explain any. It's Esther. not what we asked. And he's That's just what like, what to do? Falls to the bed. So, Esther, as you go to sit down to the bed, you pull the sheets down so you don't get them dirty. You see the book sitting in your bed. Oh my oh. god, it just appeared there. Esther's gonna open up the book. And it, She's gonna flip through the book. The title of the book, currently, is, um... It's just, in primordial, sex for dummies. Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah, no, she, see, she sees her pick up a book that it's just like, oh no, 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 no. And Caius no bashes his head into the wall as hard as he can and knocks himself. So, Esther's gonna slowly flip through the book, you see a light of understanding come to her eyes. And it does actually explain a lot of cultural stuff about it. And after a little bit, she closes the book, goes, Oh! Well, I don't see why you'd be so embarrassed. Rosalind and then just, just kind of rolls over. Yep, okay. Thing is, away can just confuse. Uh, Asha, like, after it's all gone, he gets up, alarm around the door, with the wand. Yep. And the window. Yeah. Yeah, there's no gonna... door here, it's just the door. Okay, yep, then, As... on the door. Esther's just gonna wait for a second, and then she's going to uh, grasp my souls and climb into the pot. Okay. And you do, and it seems like the hippogriff is awake. Oh, good morning. Um, it is basically huddled in the corner, as Aquarius is doing her best to just give it some space, keep the puppies away, keep Pyrrhus away. And just slowly make sure he gets some food and giving it its bed. Hello. She kind of looks at you and says, Hey, keep quiet, please. You're easily startled. Oh, of course. I won't raise my voice. Yeah, no worries. Why, why, what, why are you holding that book? Um, uh... uh she like, raises an eyebrow and she goes, I can give you tips if you need, dear. Apparent, very nice of you, but apparently there are cultural differences regarding sex that I didn't realize. Yes, there's cultural differences for everything, Esther. But I didn't realize that people here have sex with more than one person. Well, they usually don't, and if they do, they don't admit it. I don't see why that's anything to be ashamed of, though. Eh, cultural differences. Even ones are weird. You know that, come on. No, of Have you seen Caius? That's fair. So just, you have your culture, I have mine, they have theirs, let them have it, you know? In the meantime, can you help me to calm down this hippogriff? Of course, I'll try my best. What would you like me to do? Stay here and quietly relax with me until it chooses to come over. I can do that. And if you would like to fall asleep in my arms, I suppose you can do that too. I don't think I would argue. Alright. And she just basically makes herself comfortable with you. you. See the dogs are starting to kind of like curl up around her as well. She's like, eh, I'm scratching her. <laughs> hey look, they're building a ship in a bottle. Oh my god. <laughs> Devin. Take inspiration for that. Oh, god damn it, that was good. Yes. That was really good. Take inspiration for that. Fucking hell. Yes. Beautiful. Ship in a bottle. Oh. I still go over and just kind of 
cuddle. And the two bigger dogs like curl up into your lap, and you hear one of them say in your mind, "It goes warm." <laughs> Big mood. And you also notice something that you, that you feel like you should have noticed the first time you walked in, but it was just out of the way enough that you didn't. The horse is. I was about to ask. <laughs> I was just gonna look. Up. Oh, hello. Hello. How did you get in here? Wait, hold on. The ceiling. Yeah, he's just hooves on the ceiling. <laughs> like, like, just like, per, like. Just chill. Absolutely upside down, Doctor Strange. Oh, like forty-five like, oh, degrees. But yeah. Okay. How um, did you get here? I walked. Why? Uh, I'm not going to. All right. Aquarius yeah. just looks at you and goes, "Are you really questioning the horse?" I. No, talk. I'm not going. I know, but I'm not going to question this horse. By the way, Tanya, I'm sorry. I know you're confused. It'll be explained at some point. Oh my fuck, god, the poor fucking oh. horse! <laughs> okay. Yeah, you'll meet the horse, eventually. <laughs> yes, you will. Oh, I forgot to tell you last time, but, uh, you probably heard mention of a thorn scouting around. Oh, and... yes, that you did! That is Rosalind's... You did mention a thorn. That's Rosalind's pseudo-dragon. Little red dragon. Okay, yes, I did tell okay. you that after the game. I forgot. Oh, god. And as well, most of the time, Esther has a small owl hiding in her hood. Ember. Okay. Ember. There's a lot of stuff going Ember. on, you'll catch up. Yep. Yeah. Also, I'll hey. send the list of the kids once I have my book with me. It's just upstairs. Okay. Okay. Oh, also, Asha, anytime uh, Asha, like, pulled out his crossbow to shoot it, there was a ghost around his shoulders. Oh, yeah, we haven't shot it in front of her yet. That was gonna get I thought I thought he did it once, uh, at the rat thing. Yes. Oh, uh, you guys hadn't yeah. seen it? Yeah. That was before. Oh, fuck yeah, you're oh. right. Oh. Right, yeah, we were just describing it, and I just yeah. kind of laughed it, over it. When it gets yeah. there, I promise I'll explain it. All right. The only essence soon enough. Our brains. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, for now, um, the horse on the ceiling seems to be just relaxed there. Mm. Um, and you are cuddling with the dogs. Pyrrhus is snoozing in the fireplace as usual. No, I'm and, cuddling. And you notice with his the gold collection is getting you know, like, kind of impressive. Like it's mostly copper, but it's getting like almost as big as he is. Baby. Where is he getting it? We don't you know. don't know. We don't know. I cannot stress this enough. You have no idea. <laughs> I had to just explain the fact that my son is a dragon. That was interesting. Are you saying this to Aquarius? No. I'm saying this to Jacob. Yeah, she's just like slowly running her hands through, her, through your hair. Ah, uh, that is very soothing. But for the out of the face people, are you guys doing anything? Uh, Asha set up the alarm. Yep. Uh, so you're doing sending, right? Four of them on top of Oh okay. shit! Hey, speaking of which, afterwards, sorry, I'll say. Okay. Let me get to Zenia first. And I'll get back to you, right, Sky? Yeet. All right. It's the first one going to who? Uh, Weezer dead. They're all going to her family. Okay. First They're one family. to. Weezer dead. Okay. So I'm just gonna see that's okay. That works. Yeah, because I'm just slowly typing them out. I just got the first one because I can't. If you want to just, if you want to just send them to me, that's fine. Yeah, I will. Okay, and make sure with your twenty, tell me who it goes to. Yep. All right, Sky. Uh, before Esther and Aquarius go to sleep, Esther's gonna, Esther's gonna ask, "Do you think it's possible to connect while we sleep?" <laughs> she kind of gives you a strange, like, almost like a startled look, and she says, um, what do you mean? Uh, dream-wise. I think oh. it's possible. Um, is this something to do with these brain things you guys have? Uh, yes, in a sense. I just, I thought, perhaps considering the fact that we've both been to the astral plane. I mean, the astral plane is not the plane of dreams. <laughs> it's closer to nightmare. Oh, believe me, I remember. I just... But, uh, I plan to stay awake while you sleep. I need to keep an eye on the little one there. Oh, well, if need be, then you can sleep first. Oh, um, no, I, I took a rest while time. you guys were out, uh, dancing. Alright, well, wake me up when you get tired, and then I can take over. Yeah, sure thing. And she just goes back to running her hand through your hair, 
Which is soothing. Very nice. Esther's out like a light. And, Literally. uh, the. Ha ha ha. Ha. And Aquarius would notice. You know how, like, sometimes flames can go blue? Hers goes like that when she sleeps. I don't think anybody's been. Well, Xenia might have noticed. Isn't blue yeah, hotter? Something... And oh, also, like. I don't know. She's made of air. It definitely helps fan the flames. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, it straight up just makes the flames flare more. I know, which is fucking funny. Alright, any last things for you guys to rest? Nope. Kaius is, there... is already up. Is there time before rest, or is it just straight Not to rest? Not much. Alright, then it's straight to rest. Uh... That conversation was exhausting. Yes. Alright, uh, so just to uh, give a quick explanation for Tanya. So, those with the Fane, in their sleep, they can attempt to train anything they're, 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 they're vaguely understanding of. So, once you've got something you've trained uh, good enough time in, about 60 to 70 hours, um, you can begin to practice it in your sleep if you pass a check. So, because uh, you haven't started training anything, uh, there's nothing you can do with that. But for now, um, everyone else who'd like to make your sleep training checks, go ahead. Can I? If you want to activate your Fane, you can. Okay, the... Like... As a reminder, Fane activity is not what makes things worse. Okay, but also, he's not allowed to use it to talk to people, right? Uh, it, it, would, it would probably be dangerous to use it to talk to people, because that is a process of commingling. So, yes. Yep, okay. Um, Good yeah, but yep, but rocked. He's not gonna do anything. Okay, whatever. I'll do it. Okay. Raw wisdom. And Esther, if you want to roll one too, it's intelligence. Go ahead. I'm on. All right, so far. All right. Not a saving throw, but that's okay. You made the pass anyways. Fuck. All right, so everyone but Xenia, go ahead and use your uh, time to train. Still a saving throw, Esther. Wait, what? Hit intelligence, not saving throw. No, it just keeps hitting it. I did, I did my wisdom check. It's 14. Oh, sorry, did I say Kai? I'm going to say Xenia. Yep, but Xenia still has oh. four hours because four hour rest. Yep. Yeah. All right, just go ahead and mark on the training guy. Can Ashta put the hours towards trying to figure out alternatives for his issue? Yeah, that's how it's fair. Um, put down the nine hours you guys are going to sleep, as well as just make into uh, wisdom check. Just another one. How do you put the nine hours you're going to sleep? Uh, just click long rest for you. It's more so for another them to track how long it. Okay. Um. But yeah, you don't have anything you've trained up to that far, so you can't quite do this yet, Tanya, but that's okay, we'll get to it. Got it, but I'm assuming I'm resting too, right? Yeah, yeah, take a long rest. Just click the button at the top, or middle top right. Did it work? Uh, it's all on your sheet, so you have to let me know. Uh, let me see. You click Are it. all your numbers full? My numbers, uh, would blank. Uh... Are your numbers full? I'll check the sheet while I explain to uh, Ashta, okay? Alright, so, Ashta. Mm -hmm. um, as you kind of, like, discuss with the Fane, different ideas, they kind of bounce ideas off of you, and different things, just how your mind works, kind of do some probing into your mind. Which is odd when you're sleeping, because it gives the forms of, like, weird pseudo-dreams, but not really. Um, eventually, they let you know that... Um, you can basically try to headlong fight this thing. The X. Um, kind of like the... When you guys were fighting the one in the cave. And it became corporeal. If you can convince the X in your mind to do the same thing, you can eliminate them safely. Alright, and... Would that take anything with it? It shouldn't, because they are leaving of their own accord. It's not you having to, uh, um, risk I'm out the roots. Yeah. 
Okay. Um. Oh, they're telling you you're talking about your long rest run through. You're good. Okay. So. Okay. Did they know how he could do that at all? You would know that basically. Um, you'd have to convince them to. Alongside having the uh, Fane in your mind, who you can talk to. Um, it's also entirely possible for you to attempt to talk to the X and just convince them to do it. Now, you also know that the X have to possess something to become physical. It could be an object, but they have to possess something. What did, what did the X possess when they fought the dragon? Uh, they basically possessed... Uh, actually, roll a... Uh, that's just raw intelligence, actually. You can use advantage because he's the Fane. But yeah, I was going to say, he's literally talking to the Fane right now. <laughs> that better be advantage. <laughs> yeah, of course. Didn't they just possess a dragon? 17. Okay. Um, it's possible that they... Basically, the, the obsidian that you found inside the dragon. It's mm -hmm. possible it's something to do with that. Alternatively, it could have been, other, been some other physical element of the dragon that once it died, they basically just ripped out and possessed. Okay. Um, like theoretically, they could just rip out its entire um, respiratory system and invest and become that, or like the circulatory system, and just become the the veins. Right, but mm -hmm. from what Xenia yeah, reported, there wasn't a whole lot of that, was there? Oh yeah, uh, no, not left in it, no. Yeah, like the like the dragon didn't like have anything missing, right? Um, nothing that nothing that Xenia expected to be in the dragon. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, I mean, if you'd like, you could attempt to go talk to them. <sighs> He'll ask the fan if that is ever, like, could it ever possibly have any adverse effects? Um, they basically tell you, it's like, as long as you don't actively feed them. Um, like, if they try to make you think negatively and try to take over your mind. Um... Because they're so weak, it wouldn't be hard to resist it. Or, But they could just flat out trick you and outsmart you and do that kind of thing. So other than that, um, it's kind of like talking to a very emotionally manipulative toddler. Okay. Um, but if if they get their way, they get older and smarter. Absolute rats. That is a horrifying concept, just in general. Um, yep. Alright, and he'll just... In the the dream facsimile of him will like scratch the back of his head and just be like, uh, "Okay, they'll do it for a little bit, but if I just don't respond and turn off the con conversation, that's not going to do anything, right?" Um, they basically say that they agree to go into stasis most of the time. Uh, Ix would have to be like forced to shut down if they don't want to, which is very theoretically possible, especially in the weakened state as they are right now. All right. Ooh, that idea. So basically, right now is the best chance. Yeah, it, it's as I mentioned before, it is never going to get easier to get rid of them. All right, he'll, he'll uh, go for it then. Okay. You quite literally just knock, knock on the dark parts of your mind, and this you feel this like roiling. And even in your sleep, anyone seeing you probably watching. Um, you see Asha start to like shift and moan a little bit in his sleep. Um, as yes, hello, Dark my old friend. Um, <laughs> as they come into your mind, and in your mind's eye, you see this version of you, and it is a version of you that you remember. Oh from, fuck! Yeah, I knew you'd do this. What we refer to oh, as the bad days, bad times. Oh, dear. And it looks to you, and it's just got like this belligerent look on its face, and it goes. Hey there. Finally, uh, decided to open the door for me, huh? Nice to see you again. <sighs> I'm feeling good, you know. I thought this was one of the worst things that could happen, but... Goddamn, your mere existence has me slightly optimistic, which I'm sure makes you feel great. Um, That's okay. We'll get rid of that optimism eventually. I always wanted to have a way to punch that old part of myself in the face, and you provide me the slightest opportunity to get past that. 
We're feeding him. Alright. Goodbye, guys. It's just him. And, uh... Because I know you're not that. Yeah. I'm a physical manifestation of the worst parts of you. Why wouldn't I be? Because you're become not... The, uh... But I am. No, well, you're some head lice I got of off a piece of paper. Oh. Still got a silver tongue there, I see. I mean, I could still become the worst version of you if you'd like. Hmm. Or you could, like, you know, go find somewhere else to live your miserable existence that isn't in a engine of righteous fury towards cruel and unusual acts. Unfortunately, that's where I live best. Mm. Ah, you're young, what do you know? Uh, that's fair. Because the other unfortunate part of you presenting yourself is that is I know that any part of you that you try to show or any part of you that wants to bring anything up you are horribly mistaken oh I'm not against being mistaken I've got time I can slowly needle at you and I'll come around when you least expect me whenever you just happen to think of uh, something you should know I'll be right there just waiting for you his but face kind of like twitches slightly you don't seem too happy with me being around I can Drops. just leave if you'd like why'd you where would you go then just back to rest oh Until so I'm needed. so not here oh I'll so be here you just won't be able to see me I'm always here It'll be tough to get rid of me. Can he talk to his Fane currently at all, or is this like a one or yeah, the you other? Can, you can totally talk to them. Um, you know they're not super comfortable being in the presence of Ix, because they're just scared of being corrupted. But they're also in the same brain. <laughs> yeah, but they're also already in the brain, so it doesn't matter. They just don't like being in the yep. uh, he, he kind of like turns over to the Fane and is like, so is he just using everything he can get from me and taking the worst, most uh, provocative parts, or is he actually in those spots because the Ix like the bad spots? So as, in terms of, in terms as of you like, go to, you know, things in the brain. Yeah. So as you go to turn to speak them, you actually see a version of you that looks like a much healthier version of you with like relatively clean-shaven hair done up. You have um, this almost uh, essence around your shoulder, kind of like holding you, and you're looking at it. Um, and oh, this is weird. They kind of like smile at you. The, the smile looks unnatural on your face, but I don't know mm -hmm. so. Right, calm that down a bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, not used to having form. Um, well, they manifest wherever they get the most strength. Uh, just like you don't live underwater uh, if you don't have to. They don't live in uh, the optimistic places unless they have to. You've got a pretty nice habitat for them. So in the hypothetical lobotomy sense... That w those parts would be water cut out? Theoretically. If they stay where they are. But that's where they make their home right now. He kind of like turns back to it. And as they get stronger, they will spread further and become just more of who you are. <sighs> well... Hey, um, so you fain know all about where you're from, right? And the X are a similar source? Um, technically. You see the X kind of smile and says, I'm not sure what they keep telling you, but we're the same thing. We're both from God, like it or not. Just like bad humans and good humans come from the same place. And both of you kind of appeared at once. 
Well, um, time didn't really quite, uh, exist yet. That was sort of afterwards. But then technically you're both, no one's the senior, no one's the predecessor or progenitor. Um, well, as a larger cluster, we generally take charge, but Fane and Ixon don't really have a chain of command between each other. Mm. You're created by God. More of created as a part of the is, and then spread out by Godeth, but... It's uh, neither here nor there, literally. So you're the rep. He turns to the fane. You're the representation of pure good, yeah. Best intentions and helping your fellow man and all that. Oh no, we are just a representation of thought, just like they are. They're just a representation of. Uh, Runaway thought, I guess you could think of it. Uh, intrusive. Intrusive, rampant, uh, violent. Um, they didn't exist until those with violent intentions did. We are not good, we are simply information. But you two can exist with each other. Uh, not comfortably, nor for long. We are, um, always going to try to eliminate one of the other. Nikap stops for a sec. Always? As far as I'm aware. Uh, Ix and Fane can't live peacefully. At least they never have, as far as we know. Uh, if the Ix, as they usually do, attempt to take over slowly, um... Eventually the Fane have to fight back or be destroyed. I've never known it to be otherwise. <laughs> oh no. Funny that. It sounds like the exact kind of back and forth bullshit we're trying to stop. You could argue that. But um If you're comfortable with both, uh, we're not quite a fan of it, but we'll do as you ask, until it is too dangerous for us. I'm sure the X won't argue if they have a chance to be this close to Fane. He kind of like turns over to the X side. You're in my head, and I'm surprised you went at this angle. With the uh, kind of like gestures up and down. Yeah, figured we'd try the easier route first, you know. You are young. I'm growing. It's not the easier route. You know Rayla. You know she's. I tried to move past you. I tried to forget you exist, even before you had self-consciousness or whatever. Well, you've fallen back here once before. Nothing saying you can't do it again. You're right. You're always going to appear a part of me, self-aware or not. Just like the Fainar. You're well, not getting you though. You can get rid of us, though. I can't. Oh, but you can. All it would take is just making a small sacrifice to get rid of us. Mm, and then you run off with a bit of mine. Well, no, we no. eliminated. it. We can't fight you back completely yet. Mm. Not until later. I gotta wonder, though. How do you feel about me keeping you here? And keeping you right where you are. Maybe it's behind some bars, but... You know, still existing. 
Do you think it'll work? Go ahead. Always a new chance to learn. And I'm talking to... Give it some thought, let's say. Well, uh, Regardless you... of your plan of trying to take over here. You got enough thoughts to spare here, so... Go ahead. Because... All-consuming evil or not... You gotta fear death, right? Lack of existing. No. Not you seem to be. We're a small piece of a larger cluster. But you're part of me. And I know I don't want to die. You picked a bad place to set up shop. I guess I'll have to make it more like home. We'll see. If you want to take your leave at any point, feel free. And not in the violent way. But I'm not so keen on setting you up to run wild out in the world either. I'm not sure about this one or the other thing. There's got to be a way to meet in the middle. Hey, we're always happy to try. we got to learn somehow too. The more you learn, the more we grow. And the same goes for your other side. And the other, the fan go, they'd kind of nod and says, If we think it's too dangerous, we will leave, but as for now, you've treated us well, and we'll help as best we can. With enough practice, we can teach you to section off your mind, give them a Isolated habitat, but it would take time. And he kind of like stops and kind of looks over. You guys, Bo has some of you, doesn't he? You saying this to the X? Yeah. yeah go ahead. It shrugs us. I mean, if your memories are anything to judge from, sure, but we haven't seen him in person. He looked over to the Fane. Do the X give... Can they be used like a tool like you guys can? They kind of hesitate a little bit. Nod. You've seen how... How Bo has attacked your minds before. Uh, you've seen the X possess things before. They, they do make things stronger cost. But what if that was balanced out? I don't know. All of our understanding tells us that the X cannot be balanced out by us. They feed off of us. We are food to them. Hmm. It's like trying to balance water with fire. Sure, you can eventually get a fire the size you want, but where you've put the water, the fire won't spread back. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just need a different way of looking at it. I just can't help but see this all as terribly allegorical to little struggle we're having in the top side, real world, material, whatever you want to call it. Potentially. Side with the druids, or side with the zodiac. One can't exist without the other, endless cycle of fighting. Oh no, we can happily exist without the X. The X can live without us, they choose not to. If the X completely separated from Vayne, they would just continue to grow and never have any competition. But they grow faster from consuming fame, so they consume fame. And the fame can't do the same for the X. That's only if you're separate, though. They kind of just nod. <laughs> Say, Again, no, no food likes living with their uh, 
consumer. Well, we got the hippogriff and Pyrrhus. Unfortunately, the young work better. We are each um, older than time itself. But we will try if you ask. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. At least not the parts of you that are in me. Vane no. got a bit of superiority, but... No, we are, um... <laughs> we will let you experiment. Colin says you need us. And the image of them fade. Just kind of scratches up his face. Vane and X, huh? It's just kind of leaning back against a pillar that wasn't there before and just smiling. I don't think you understand the situation you're in right now. I don't think you do either. But, uh... I don't know. Neither of us can know the whole truth, right? No, but we're certainly closer than anyone else. Must be nice to be this enlightened. Glad we could be of assistance. He just kind of like gives a gives like a final look towards them. And just fortunately, you're keeping me from talking with my teammates, so I'm biased against you. If it helps, we're trying to eat you. Don't feel too bad. Maybe I should try to eat you back. He'll wake up. Alright. Yeah. So. Oh, I've been waiting for something like this. Alright, so. As everyone kind of wakes up, Ashta is the last to wake up. So, you know, the kind of like tossing, turning in the night continued for most of the night. Um, Ashta, as you wake up, your wings are out. At least, the left side, your wings are out. On the right side, it's just bareback. I think we're going to leave it for there today. Yeah, that's not good. None of that was uh, good. One, God one damn wing? it. Damn it. Okay, yep. All right. We're going to end the recording probably soon. Anything else that needs to be said? Uh, sorry. Sorry, y'all. Damn. That's Damn. real. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I've got many things to say, but okay. Ash is gonna Ariel do what he's thoughts. gonna do. <laughs> yep. Alright, we'll stop the recording until next week. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed. Good night, y'all. Devin, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs>